How's it going, everybody? This is Dave Meltzer. We're going to be here for the next two hours talking pro wrestling. We've got Brian Alvarez of Figure Four Weekly here, and we're going to have Tom Zink up in about a half an hour as well. We'll be taking your phone calls as well as your emails, and uh, we got a lot of wrestling news to talk about. And I guess we will start with SmackDown last night, and I thought that that was a tremendous television show and an awesome main event. And, um, you know, I guess that it's better to have a good show than a bad show. And when the rating came in, uh, I was kind of depressed uh, because even though it's too soon for these ratings to turn around, I mean, it's it, it took them, you know, I don't know, they went down seven straight weeks, and there's a lot of momentum in that direction. The fact is, is no matter how anybody slices this, there was no competition on TV last night. And, you know, the reason that the numbers of SmackDown went down was because of Survivor and Friends. And there is no Survivor anymore. And Friends is in reruns and only did like an 8.0 rating, which is, and nobody did a big rating. So there is no reason why WWF did a 3.9 last night other than it's a very cold product. So anyway, Brian, what's going on? That's really depressing, actually. You know, we should yeah. do a poll one of these days and ask fans. You know, when you're a when you're a big wrestling fan and the product is really hot and there's something on another channel, say Survivor, that runs head to head with wrestling, what do you do? Do you tape wrestling and watch the other show? Do you watch wrestling and tape the other show, or how exactly do you do it? I want to. I just really want to know how much yeah, but, but the this competition is, this is really like the, affects the wrestling shows. Okay, but this is the absolute wrong audience to do that for. The audience you do that for is for the people that watch wrestling every now and then. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like it's like where the where the three point nine. Okay, mm -hmm. it's the the people who were the 5.0 that it was that, it's that 1.1 that used to be the three in the 3.9 that made a five. Those are the people you got to poll for all of these yeah. questions on why they're not watching. I mean, like polling us on why people aren't watching. You can't ask us. We're still watching. Although, I mean, I could say that I probably yeah, would have gotten. Do have, we do have a lot of people. I think that listen to this show that have kind of uh, they've no, given right. up on watching right. every single show. True. No, you're right. You know, and, and, and if people, I want to think that this is a good question. In email in, if you were someone who religiously watched, if you were part of the 4.5 to 5.0 that watched SmackDown and the 5.0 that watched Raw, and you have not, and you did not watch Monday or Thursday, um, what will it take to get you back, or are you just out of the habit, or yeah, that's actually a really good question. But that, you're, and there's you're, a lot of uh, good feedback on the site, by the way, because we did ask the question yesterday. You know, what What can wrestling do differently? Actually, Dave can probably tell you what the question was better than I could because he wrote it. But we have a lot of uh, responses it, it, it was, on the it, feedback section today. Yeah, the question that I asked was um, on the feedback section on the website was for WCW. If you were a WCW fan, uh, what would it take to get you to watch this relaunch? And are you going to watch it? And I tell you what, when I read the result, when I read a lot of the letters, the thing that was bad is that my, this, this is my thought on, on most of it is that the people who watched WCW were a dwindling number of people who longed for the past and wanted it to go backwards to the past, you know, like uh, Ric Flair and Ricky Steamboat. And while, unfortunately, while there is probably a lot of people of a certain age group that would like that, they're kind of set in their ways and it's hard to get them back. They've kind of given up on wrestling. And in the new age group, it's just... It's it's hard to go. Do you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a, to go you know, backwards. I looked at, at at those WCW responses, and and the, the the sense I got was the people that were watching WCW and not WWF at the end were the people that were just so loyal, and they kept bringing up Jim Crockett. Okay, you know, like the Jim Crockett days and and Ric Flair, and it was like you know that was like 13 years ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? It'd be like if um. It's, just, it's, 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 it's like a TV show that passed its peak and everything like that. And there was so much mention of Ric Flair. And, um, you know, you can't, you know, I, Ric Flair always meant a big deal in the ratings for WCW when he was a babyface and, and pushed. But you can't rely on Ric Flair at his age for, for anything other than, like, garnish. I mean, like, I, you know, believe me, Ric Flair, Bill Goldberg, that's, I like that combination. I like that whole chemistry. But, um, you know, if one, the odds are they're not going to have Ric Flair. And if you you can't make it without Ric Flair in the long run, you can't make it because you know how much you know how much longer can Ric Flair be out there? Yeah. Well, he could actually so, be out there a long, long time. But as an active competitor, uh, not very long. But how how long will this dwindling number of people want to watch wrestling to see an aging Ric Flair 
before their eyes. I mean, you know how many people were so depressed at that angle with Kevin Nash, which was pure stupidity when it happened. But it's like, but sooner or later when Ric Flair gets to be 55, 56, I mean, you know, it's like Dick the Bruiser. You know what I mean? It's like sooner or later. Dick the Bruiser drew even when he was in his 52, but by the time he was like 56, it was kind of like even those Dick the Bruiser fans were like, yeah, God damn, Dick's old. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but you were seeing him in the ring, you know, in his underwear, as opposed to, you know, Ric Flair looking stately in his suit, being a television Good point. performer. He can go for another 10, 15 years. He really can. 15? You want to see Ric Flair when he's 65 out there cutting promos? You know promos? what? I do. I really do. <laughs> okay. You know what? After watching the promos last night, you know, one of the things, as, as great as uh, as Steve Austin's promo was, when it, the one thing I was thinking was, is you know, you know what? That was a very good promo, but... It was not as good as a Ric Flair promo. I don't know why that thought came into my head, but when it was over, it was like, that's what it was. It was like, wow, he's just not... You know, like when Ric Flair would have those promos and you just go, man, that was awesome, and you just call up your friends and go, what an awesome promo. I mean, Steve Austin's promo was, that's a pretty damn good promo. Yeah. So, now, Kurt Angle, with that line about, uh, what is the Saved by the Bell? Whoever wrote that deserves uh, some sort of an award this week for uh I am the biggest Kurt line. Angle fan in the entire world. Don't even bother writing emails saying that you're bigger, because we're not going to read them here on the air. That He was so awesome last night, and every single thing that he did, from his promo to the match, just everything. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. That was that was good. And then that tape... Uh, you know, I have a friend, tape. in fact, it's, it's Shoulders Trelli, and uh, Young Shoulders broke into the business at the same time as Kurt Angle. And he usually comes over to watch SmackDown with me, and every Thursday night without fail, I just have to say, Vince, you know that um, Kurt Angle's been in the business as long as you, and he gets very depressed. But it's true. Yeah, he's been in the business basically as long, long shorter than you, right, Brian? <laughs> yes, he has. It's quite <laughs> yeah. depressing. It's not depressing. He's just a freak. What can we he's say? A freak. We, the poll we had here, by the way, on who should move to the WF number two heel slot, even though this poll was tampered with, as they all are, unfortunately, even if it wasn't, everybody still voted for Kurt Angle, so I'll just say that. <laughs> um, we got what's today's poll? Uh, well, before I get on that, that's uh, what's the best TV match of the year? I think it was. Uh, let me see. Uh, I don't have it in front of me. Um, I don't have it in front of me. Anyways, it was the best TV match of the year for WWF. We have the tables, ladders, have, and chairs. Have, ma- guys, I have the uh, the poll right here. It's uh, Benoit. Go ahead. Benoit versus Jericho ladder match. Rock versus Triple H, uh, two out of three falls. Benoit versus Angle. Uh, no, not Rock. It's Austin it's, versus uh, Triple Austin H. Triple H. Austin Triple H, two out of three falls. All right, you have Rock versus Triple H. So okay, I will, well I made a mistake. Change that then. Okay. Uh, the ben- two out of three fall match from the pay per view. Yeah. Okay. Benoit versus Angle at WrestleMania. Benoit Jericho versus Austin and Triple H and TLC from SmackDown. Okay, so those are the five choices. Uh, what other stuff do we got? You know, here? I think that was w- the scariest TLC match that I've ever seen last night. Uh huh. Why, I mean, they didn't, they didn't fly over the top rope off a ladder through a table or anything like that, but just some of the stuff they did was so scary. That twist of fate that Devon took off the ladder, that did almost landed head first, like vertically. He would have been done for. I can believe Bubba Ray took a, a snap suplex onto a ladder. A ladder. I, I, I've seen that one done. Sandman used to do that, take that on guardrails. Oh, my God. A guardrail is one thing. This is a ladder. Sharp edges and everything. Yeah. Um, that was brutal. That was a, I thought that was an excellent match. I mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't. Do you think it was better than the WrestleMania match? I thought it was as good. Maybe he told a better story. Yeah. Something I don't know. Just uh, I don't know. I'd have to watch the WrestleMania match again. There was kind of something about the finish there. I mean, it really was a great story, but it was like they did the spear off the ladder and. It took so long from that spot to for having Benoit get up to the top that they kind of lost the crowd for a minute. But they got back into it when Benoit got the belts. But I don't know. I'd have to watch that uh, WrestleMania one again. There's a lot of stuff going on for Monday night in Calgary. Um, and I'm not aware of all of it. Um, other than I know that uh, a lot of the hearts are pining to be on television Monday. And, and I think Stu's going to end up on TV Monday night. Hmm. So... Uh, which means some sort of an angle. I mean, I don't know what it means. I just got a feeling Stu's... I, 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 I've been told, and I'll know more. I will have more stuff. I, I have a feeling we'll, we'll have a lot more on the Calgary show on the website by Monday. But, um, yeah, I think Stu's going to be on TV Monday night. So and just, uh, That's very what? weird. You know what I mean? For some reason, I just <sighs> never thought I would see Stu Hart on WWF TV again. Ever. I not, think not, nothing to do with his age. <laughs> just, you know... Never I, think I'd see the, it. I think the deal is is that uh, it's time to make amends, 
And I also think that uh, Stu, if he has any mixed uh, feelings about it, it's that if, he'll, if it can do anything to help uh, Bruce get a job or, or get in better standing with the WWF. Because, you know, the Stampede guys, you know, they want to be that developmental territory. And if, you know, WWF asks Bruce, you know, hey, you know, can we have this favor in exchange for any, you know, any favor? You know, your first born, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Bruce is going to, you know, do everything he can to get it. And the lawsuit is over. And, you know, um, I mean, strange things. Hey, I never thought they were going to call up Scott Hall and ask him to be a judgment day. You know what I mean? When ratings yeah. go down, when ratings go down, strange things happen. And, and enemies become friends. And uh, anything that can draw money becomes an option, even if seven weeks ago it was something that in a million years could never happen. So, How about that for the new uh, WWF catchphrase? Anything can happen in the WWF when the ratings plummet. <laughs> you think they put that on TV? Uh, the first half. I, was surprised I don't know if they're going to go in there. On TV last night. Uh, what? The signs on TV last night. Some of the signs have got on TV last night. You know what I didn't like about 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 and, I, and this has happened the last time I went to SmackDown. You know what I find like and I, and I guess when you, when you're a fan and you go there, you know, a lot of people complain about hating to go to TV tapings because of the signs. And when I was watching, you know, it's one thing like at the opportune time or between matches, you hold up your sign or something, but. It got to this point, watching that thing, where everybody, they weren't there to watch matches, although the crowd response was very good in L.A. It was one of those crowds that was, they were there so their friends can see them on TV and they can watch themselves on TV Thursday night because every time the camera would go, you'd see everyone hold up their sign, and then as soon as the camera would pan away from them, they put their sign down and watch the matches. It was like it was, um, I mean, I've seen that on many TVs before, but it was, for some reason, very, it was, it was more so in L.A. or Anaheim, actually, than, than usual. Very weird. I want to make uh, a couple of things. First of all, the, um, the June 30th San Francisco show was canceled due to low ticket sales. Um, and there's a bunch of reasons, but, you know, that, that was basically... Now, the July 1st show in Spokane that a lot of sites are listing as canceled is not canceled, according to the WWF. Um, and that's as of, you know, like five minutes before the show started. So that July 1st Spokane is still on, but June 30th in San Francisco is off. Um, yesterday, Judge... Um, was Denny Chin? Judge, Judge Denny Chin in a U.S. District Court in New York, refused to dismiss the WWF's lawsuit against the PTC, James Lewis, and everybody else. Basically, uh, PTC tried to... What? He had not What'd read the lawsuit. Who hasn't read? What do you mean? The judge. The judge hasn't read the lawsuit? He must have read the lawsuit. <laughs> I'm just looking at that lawsuit, and we were talking about it as, you know, how, how could this lawsuit have even gotten to court? You know, some of the things they were... Uh, alleging in there, and the fact that he did not dismiss it, I think, is kind of strange. Well, I mean, the, the basically, there's a couple of key points in there that, you know, kept it going, and it's like, you know, they've got, you know, you have freedom of speech in this world, especially when it has to do with, like, public figures, and WWF is a public company, Vince McMahon is a public figure, that are pretty broad, but you can't lie. Um, there's no protection against outright lying, and what the judge saw... And the two, the two points I think that the judge saw was the, the claim of 35 to 40 sponsors having pulled out, which is just not an accurate number. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's an inflated number. Um, and I, I know that usually, in most cases, they were pretty careful saying that these companies had agreed not to sponsor and not actually say. You know, it's the misleading thing. Yeah. But I guess there, there must have been spots here and there where they forgot that they were misleading and actually made a statement. And you can't really do that and the other one is is um you know any kind of attribution of certain deaths to smackdown when the deaths of those kids occurred before smackdown had ever aired its first episode that's a pretty tough one <laughs> and i think that those were the two if it wasn't for those two points i think he would have thrown the whole thing out um and the other point that he made was that a lot of these statements were made by bozell for fundraising purposes so they were commercial statements they were not you know it's one thing if you're like a a political group and you're protesting abortions okay it's another if you are out there and you are using certain facts to raise you know basically to raise money for yourself and yeah. you know right you know what i mean there's there's a commercial you know it's, it's both you know is it a is it a moral cause or a commercial cause and the judge felt that because they were doing it in fundraising videos and the nature of what they were doing it it constituted a commercial venture so some of the protection uh, some of the libel protection of a commercial venture is not as strong as a 
as a non-commercial venture. So anyway, the lawsuit's going to keep going. Um, WWF sent out press releases on that. And uh, what other stuff do we got here? Uh, so we've got the ratings. Mark Coleman. Hunter is out six months. Hunter is out. That's right. Hunter surgery. Uh, he's going to be out. He's going to be out six months. And um, in wrestling, that is uh, six years. Yeah. You know, what do you do, Brian? Do you think he should be off TV the whole six months? I, I kind of have my mental picture of what they should do, especially after watching TV. I don't know. See, the thing is, they're, they're kind of building towards a Steve Austin turn right now, and if they wait six months, I, I, I thought they were building towards. TV, people are going to totally forget. I, I they were building. Brian, I think they're building towards a Hunter turn. Nice. Well, yeah, Austin that's turn. what I mean. Austin turning on Hunter. I think. Oh, okay. That, okay. What they should probably do, you know, why not put him on TV for a little while now, and then just have Austin absolutely decimate him, and he's off TV till he comes back. Um, oh, I could see him coming back. I think that they that they need to get a report on Raw Monday, you know, showing like the operation, showing all this, so we establish showing an history of Perry Wilde's neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I, I think that that, that that he has to be on TV, not live in the building, but tapes, you know, for a couple of weeks. I think the idea of him coming to the building once and then just getting destroyed is a great idea, but then he can't be around for a while, you know, because he's there. After recuperation, and he's like doing, you know, like he's there like in four to six weeks, and he's part of the storyline, but he can't wrestle. I think it'll really dilute his return, and then keep him away, and have the people just want him to come back, and uh, get Stephanie. I, I think that it's time for for them to do an angle where Stephanie ends up with Kurt Angle, um, and you know, it's just got to be a strong thing. So when Hunter comes back, to me, where I where I see this is that. You know, you and you get Kurt Angle to feud with someone, and Shamrock's name's out there. I think that's like a, actually, if Shamrock is ready and can do it, I think that's a pretty natural program because he's new and he's fresh. Um, I got a feeling it may be someone from WCW, just uh, being what they did on Monday, and I wouldn't be surprised to see some WCW. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I, and I wouldn't be surprised to see some maybe a, a WCW person or two on Monday night, or certainly within a few weeks, we know we're going to see him. Uh, but I would like to see you know some new guy uh, feuding. I could see that. Okay, let's say it's, um, how's this one? I mean, because if it's a WCW guy with Shane in the corner against Angle with Stephanie, you got the family thing. I don't, God, I almost don't like that because they've done so much of the family that I almost don't want to see it now. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that, but if that was if that was in a booking meeting, I think that that would have a better chance of uh, Yeah, but the thing purpose. is they're not going to have Stephanie, you know, they're going to build it up if she ends up with Kurt Angle. And if they're doing, I mean, they're already building up Shane and angle right now and they can't hold that off three months while they get stephanie ready and if they rush stephanie to kurt angle it's going to make no sense you've been married to hunter for a year and a half now no i think that i think that they should do a one week thing i think i think they they should do it uh no not a one week thing but i think they should do it and get it there and establish those two together and establish that she double crossed hunter because they got to break up that thing anyway um, and it's it's overdue for breaking up and when him with him not being there it's the perfect time to do it for her to be a heel because you know, everyone will everyone will now have sympathy. You know, like before it would be like, ah, oh, you know, pussy, you lost your wife. That's why neither of them would ever break up. You know what I'm saying? Now, now he's, he's gone. gone. I think that people would have great sympathy for it if she dumped him then. And they would Her really... His leg, he lost his girl. Yep. And then he's ready to come back. And people will feel it when he comes back on Kurt. And then you still got the... You got, so you got the Kurt, Triple H angle. When, when he comes back, let's say, in October, November. And you can you do that for Kurt a couple angle of... This time he has to though, because yeah. because you're building up to Mania, because the timing's going to work for Mania where you go okay. with um, and that's provided you got Rock's Hunter not around. And Austin. Hunter and Austin, but that's okay if it's the right thing with Hunter as a babyface, and um, you can hold off that match you know for a long long time. One of our first emails is going to be about OV Wrestling, Ohio Valley. Uh, I want to make mention Saturday night is the or it's actually Sunday technically, but Saturday night our time is the Pride Show. And uh, it's quite an interesting lineup. You got any thoughts on the lineup? Any predictions? We can actually predict I have this no because I just haven't watched enough. Okay. Well, I'm going to go and make a fool of myself. Fujita Takayama. Going to go with Fujita. Igor Vovchanch and Gilbert Ibel. <sighs> Igor. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know what? That's gonna, that, one, that one could go either way, but yeah. Vanderlei Silva against Shingo Oyama. I'm going to take the Silva. easy way, which is say Vanderlei Silva. Uh, Dan Henderson against Akira Shoji. Dan Henderson. Vitor Belfort, Heath Herring. Heath Herring. 
Van, uh, Valentino Overeem against Gary Goodridge. Valentino Overeem. Guy Metzger versus Chuck Liddell. I haven't mm. gone back and forth on this one. You have seen these two guys. Chuck Liddell. Chuck Liddell? Uh, Guy Metzger. Pele versus Dijero Matsudi. Pe Matsui Pele and Joe Hill de Oliveira against Antonio Shembri. I'll go with Shembri on this one. So anyway, um, there was another thing uh, having to do with that. Mark Coleman showed up for the Pride Show, and he had his two belts. His uh, it's, it's so weird. <laughs> you know how come we talk about Pride being pro wrestling? It's reasons like this. He shows up with his Pride World Heavyweight Title Belt and his WWF World Martial Arts Title Belt, which has nothing to do with the WWF, although it did in 1978, and uh, when the belt first came up and Antonio Noki held it. And he challenged Kazuyuki Fujita, who's on the main event of Pride, to a match for Fujita's two IWGP title belts, which will take what a place. Shocker. Yeah. And we've been talking about this. This was like how this whole thing's going to go together. Now, the thing is, if Fujita at first is wrestling Yuji Nagata on June 6th at uh, Budokan Hall. So basically, Coleman did not challenge Fujita as much as he challenged the winner of the Fujita Nagata match, which makes sense in that Coleman and, Fuji and uh, Nagata worked on New Year's Eve in a pro wrestling style tag team match and actually had. A match that would be a miracle, uh, I guess, except that Eugene Nagata is in it, so it probably wasn't a miracle because, hell, Mark Coleman's better than Vince Russo, and, you know, Eugene Nagata's probably better than Ric Flair, so <laughs> we've seen better, you know, more, uh, more examples of, uh, that, you know, better examples of miracles than that. But um, they're looking at doing that either uh, July at the Sapporo Dome or October at the Tokyo Dome. The Coleman match with either Fujita and Nagata, where the winner will be the world champion, not only of the shoot world, but the warped world, all at the same time, which is quite a coup. You want to know my prediction? Yes. Dissecting Antonio Noki's brain. Can you do that? Vegeta is going to have the titles going to his match with Coleman, and they will have a real fight for those belts. Why? No. Because I don't think Inoki even cares which guy wins all the titles. But I think that he wants a real fight with all those belts on the line for a real world champion. Not on a New Japan card. Doesn't matter where. I, I, I mean, if it was on a Pride show, I would be skeptical, but not on a New Japan show. If it's on a New Japan show, it's, it's, it's going to be a work match. I will now, stand what, by my prediction. Okay, but what's really I, weird... I, seriously, no. I, I really think that'll happen. Uh, well, it... it in its own way, that would be Inoki's ultimate dream, wouldn't it? Yep. That he turned pro wrestling, you know, he turned this, this pro wrestling into real sport. And he made that world title real. Which he... If if Coleman were to beat either Fujita... Okay, okay, put it this way. If it's Nagata, there's no way. They're not going to yeah. put Nagata in a shoot. Not that, he, That's why not that he's not a tough... Win. Okay. But if it's Fujita... Boy... Okay, Coleman and Fujita, and Coleman wins. Does that make the IWGP belt real? It sort of does, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. I mean, Coleman would have... And then who cares you know, what he does from there, but he'll just have that. But then Coleman has to lose to who? Like Nagata or, some, or Nakanishi or somebody like that, eventually. Eventually, that IWGP belt's got to go back to New Japan, and yeah. it's got to be in work matches again. Yeah. I think they give Coleman a win. A perfect opportunity. He can he can do his dream. He can get it over with and uh, get it out of his system, and uh, go back to wrestling. No, he'll never get it out of his. If it works, he'll never get it out of the system. He'll keep trying to repeat it. You know how that goes in wrestling. Yeah. Okay. Let's let me see if there's any other notes here, uh, as far as news go. Let's go to some emails. Do you know how ticket sales are going for UFC 32? The last I checked, they were not doing very well. Uh, this is from Jason Campbell, who went to Ohio Valley the last couple of days. He goes. I had the opportunity to attend the OVW shows on Tuesday and Wednesday. After watching their TV for the past 10 months, it was nice to see a couple of live shows. Tuesday night was a weekly show at St. Teresa's Gym. I was disappointed that there were only about 50 fans there, but if 300 people had showed up, you would have had to have parked a mile away. The guys all worked hard. I never heard one guy calling spots. The Wednesday show was the TV taping from the Davis Arena, which should be called the Davis Warehouse. I mean, that, place is, that place is tiny. He goes, it was another entertaining evening. I think they have a few guys who were definitely going to make it. Shelton Benjamin and Randy Orton for sure. I'm pretty sure about Rico Constantino, Leviathan, Ron Waterman, John Cena. Ah, John Cena. And Mike Hard. Really? I, I watched, just watched uh, Ohio Valley last night, and I am not. Mike Hard lacks, lacks charisma. 
Uh, he goes, I'm not sure about Brock Lesnar. He seemed to be missing something, but he did look great. I enjoyed the local guys, too. Rob Conway, Nick Dinsmore, Flash, Damager, Jason Lee, Johnny Spade, and especially Doug Basham are all good wrestlers. The only negative on these guys is size. Conway and Basham have good physiques, but there is a very distinct difference between the guys with the big WWF deals and the ones with the smaller WWF deals or none at all when it comes to the physiques. What is he trying to say? <laughs> I think we know what that is. If WCW was still around as a distinct entity, some of the guys would have a much better shot at making it. If you compare this promotion to other indies I've seen, it blows them away. There weren't any matches where you couldn't wait for the match to be over. If you're looking for a lot of spectacular moves and a lot of brawling in the crowd, this is Big not Sean the promotion Mark Henry for you. Must not have been on that card. Big Show wasn't. Um, Got yeah, I know. This one was Mark Henry. I watched it. Oh, uh, some both of those. The Mark Henry. Did you ever see the Mark Henry match with Russell McCall of the Loser Leave Town? No. That match was horrible. I mean, for, <laughs> by any standard. Um, I'm so not sold on Russ McCullough. Um, uh, you know, and, and the funny thing is, is he may be in the WWF before any of them just because he's 6'10". The TV yeah. tapings are free and the house shows are reasonably priced. Some of the baby faces are available for autographs and pictures during intermission. And I guess if you hung around a while after the show, the heels would be too. I recommend that anyone in the area attend their shows on a regular basis. If you're a few hours away, it's still a good road trip. You could see shows on Sunday, Tuesday, and Wednesday all in Louisville and hit Six Flags on Monday. Okay. Got a lot of compliments. I'm not going to read them all, but uh, about the show yesterday, I thought Max Payne was tremendous yesterday. That was, was awesome. a really awesome, really entertaining show. Uh, someone who was asking about if we could get Steve Regal on, we will. Oh, we already got Tom Zink on the line. Let me just go through one more, and then we'll uh, we'll get to Tom. Do you think the WF will go get Rob Van Dam? Uh, yeah, uh, Rob Van Dam will will almost for sure be in. Uh, I guess we can answer that one simply. Um, Tom, how are you doing today? Wonderful. Who's cool. working in the WWF? This is the first time the guys at work have even started talking about wrestling again. Wow. So, what, Monday and Thursday? You got it. I heard from my boss today. He's a big mark, and he likes wrestling. And he said about Benoit, he dove off the ta into a table and stuff. It was great yep. stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Awesome main event last night, yeah. That's what I heard. Now, they're turning the corner. Is that what they're I doing? Don't I, I I don't know what they're. It's a, it's in a state of flux. I mean, you know, I, I'm always someone. If you have friends who, talking, that's a good thing. But as far yeah. as uh, the rating, it hasn't turned around yet. Yeah, it's the rating won't turn around. Five. Three point nine. Oh, really? Yeah. Holy smokes! He's in trouble, huh? Uh, it just depends on. I tell you what, the whole future depends on if he makes a hit out of the relaunch of WCW. Because mm -hmm. um, promotional you know, I mean. Interpromotional almost always works real big. Mm -hmm. but if he blows it, um, they're in trouble. And if he doesn't blow it, then you know they may have another NWO on their hands if it's done right. So, I, you know, it could, it could, I, I see this one going either bad. way. It's going to be either be a big hit or it's going to be a big flop. I, I don't know which it'll be, but I think that we'll, I think that we're going to know in six to eight weeks um, a lot about uh, you know the next year of the business. I read something. Yeah, I read something that uh, Linda said it was going to start in two or three weeks. Is that just a swerve for their investors? Because I mean, the way I look at it, he didn't broaden his base with the XFL, right? The booking's getting a bit stale, except for this last week. So why doesn't he just bite the bullet? Everyone wants to see Goldberg against Austin. Austin doesn't have all that much time left. Triple H, how serious is that injury? Now that to the bone. Torn, torn quad. He had big surgery yesterday, oh. and uh, he's out six months. Oh my goodness! But in a positive way. Tom, 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 because you know, you've been around. Yeah. How, how familiar are with with like, a fully torn quad? Because that's I never. I mean, that's a rare injury. Fully torn. I mean, I've, you know, I've heard of partial tears, but a fully torn quad. Well, some guys when they're so big like that, and uh, you get older, uh, your your muscle gets brittle. You know, when you're older, he's only, 31. he's only 31 or 32. But does he take anabolic steroids? That might have something to do oh, with it. Oh, come on it. now. I don't know. Well, <laughs> what I'm saying is I know guys that have uh, been on the juice, and I'm not saying he is, but I know that it tends to, they tend to blow tendons and rip biceps, and that that's one of the bad things that it does do. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I was well, talking about that the other day. Huh? Well, I mean, I, I, I think that, like, in most cases, there's certain injuries, like a torn abdominals, yep. torn pecs, and torn quads. I mean, I, and, and torn triceps. Yep. That almost always are inherent. You know, go with the steroid guys. Whereas I've seen guys that never did steroids. In fact, almost every friend of mine that hasn't done steroids has at yep. one point or another had partially torn biceps. I think that you just tend to because of ego really? to overload them, and then you, you know, and it's small muscle. Yep. But the but the but the, the quad the torn quad. I mean, that's 
And that's a bad one. That's a hard one to recover from. I think you'll be out quite a while like that, and then you have to rehab it, and then you know you're gonna have to put that size. It's a, it's a big deal, like a like not as bad as Austin with the neck, but maybe he can come back. But that's not for sure. So I say bite the bullet. Vince is a risk taker. Get Goldberg. Sign up everyone. Get DDP. Sign them all. He pissed away seventy six million. He's got to do something fast. So NBC is big shareholders. Don't dump him. He's got to grow the business. Bite the bullet. That's what made him big anyway. He took risks. Take a risk and get these guys. Jacket. There's no competition. So you send Heyman and you send Shane down there, and you have let them go nuts. And if it fails in WCW, you write it off. You know it's the, you know it's WCW, and you you know you try and have two companies, and you know like Pepsi and Coke. You know it both grows. The other one gets a rating. There's two things. There's not just one target. The WWF. Let Heyman go mental down there. Let him go nuts. You know, uh, you know, electrocute someone, hang by their thumbs. You no, know? you can't go that far because you don't want to. You don't want to kill your advertisers because yeah, the advertisers right. will pull out a bow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Is you have Shock TV? Look what he's. You know, in the ECW like product, but have it a little crazy. And then you have an invasion. You have crossover. You have two shows. That's what I do. You, you know? know, what would be the greatest thing that could possibly happen in wrestling right now is if Vince were sitting in a meeting, and he was trying to negotiate a time slot for WCW, and they just said, "Look, if you don't have Goldberg and you don't have Ric Flair, we're not going to talk." Thank then you. Vince, Vince would be, you know, Vince would be able to say, "Look, guys, I got to pay this guy six million. I have no choice, or we have no TV." And he'd have a scapegoat right there. Bite the bullet. That's right. He doesn't have to. He runs over people. What's he afraid of his locker room? They work for him. Who signs a paycheck? Vince is the boss, right? I'll tell you the other thing. I don't know. You need. I mean, him. seven weeks. Seven weeks ago, things would have been different. But yeah. I think right now. A lot of those guys would welcome Bill Goldberg because I think they would know that it means, in the long run, it means money for everyone. Of course. I think they would think that. I could be wrong because I haven't discussed that with any with anyone there. But um, well, they can't be that stupid, can they? I mean, come on. I mean, the the Chris's and you know, I I would think they got they they didn't have any fresh ideas. So the internet people they want to see Chris, you know, Benoit, Jericho push them. He doesn't have a strong next tier to come up. He hasn't grown anyone. They're going to be fighting for spots. So broaden it out, you know. You know, have Paul Lee, have, you know, change is good, competition is good. That's what he ought to do, just bite the bullet. So what? He runs the show. You know, he's I got his just... crew up there, and then you send Shane and them, they come up with some different ideas, a totally different product. And if he fails, he just puts it on WCW, closes it down. But you got to you know take what? back that money that you lost, right? You know you know what? Uh, one, one thing, I do like the idea of a different concept rather than, you know, like having both groups do WF style wrestling. No, no, no. No, no. I, yeah, so I think I agree with you. you. You really want to do a different form. I mean, it's pro wrestling. You're still in the ring, but you want it to look different. And then when you do the interpromotional, it's it's like you're fighting styles. You're going like our style is better than your style when when we're mixing. Yeah. Right? It adds you an know, element you know, rather than like. What made me mad is is uh, you know Vince has given away those WCW rings, which means the w, you know the WCW show is going to have the WWF rings. I think it's a mistake. I don't oh, because then it's because because you want that different look, don't you think? Yeah, you need a totally different look, a new set, different Who got lighting, the rings? a different Titantron, a different ramp, everything. Well, I mean, they they've got the show. I mean, it's they've always had a better production. You know what I mean? It's always looked better. You probably got a point there. Yeah, but I'm sure they could get it back. Who's got the rings? Wrestlers. I think he gave something like uh, Terry Taylor. Terry Taylor, I heard. Yeah. Dusty get one. Terry Taylor's been the all there. over. He sold. Get the rings back. <laughs> I mean, always, I, well, I'm you sure you've got something with Terry Taylor. Why doesn't he hire him anyway? He was always a great. Yeah, you, can, you, you can always. You know, the thing is, you can always get, like, make a different canvas and different color robes. Yeah, you can always make new rings and just make them, or even old rings and, and, and make them look different. You know, with a different design. So it's not like giving away those rings in the end of the, end of the world or anything. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I don't know. But uh, I, I see it more as an indication that. He's thinking this needs to be very similar to the WWF product. Well, he was. Of course, I'll tell you, he was. That's what they were thinking seven weeks ago. Everyone is, you know, every, I think everyone had a thought process seven weeks ago of what this was going to be, and now all of a sudden, everyone's got a different thought process, but they're not the same because, you know, it's like, you know, like we said, the, the big saying, Brian, when the ratings go down, yep. you know, then they start to squirm. Well, then you've got, then you, then everyone's got their thinking caps on on what you're going to do. When ratings are great, you just kind of. They kind of coast, which is probably kind of what happened, is that they coasted. And uh, the, you know, one thing you can't do is, is with this audience now is obviously you can't coast. And also, you know, hey, you know, hindsight being 2020, the Austin turn with when Rock with Rock being gone, the timing was all wrong. And Undertaker's top babyface just it was too aged of a look. It, it didn't work.
Yeah. And I think uh, one of the things about the Austin heel turn was, you know, you had this built up for so long. Steve Austin, the baby face, he does his big comeback. He's getting his big match at WrestleMania. You get a million people buying the show, and what do they get at the end? Their hero turns pad. I yeah. mean, it's kind of turned just tons of people off. Yeah, I was just waiting for the Montreal finish coming for him, huh? <laughs> I mean, you know, really, I mean, you know what guys that works that they fight it? Oh, God, seen it? Oh, geez. They've already seen him be, you know, it's like, and then they did it where? In Texas. He's like, what? Are you giving him the hint? Was there a pink slip in the check? I mean, you know, he's got a bad neck. What's their planning? I don't see it. Yeah, but, you know, he, I tell you what, they need him. I know they need him three, back. For three years, don't you think it's like one guy, they, they wanted to see him against Goldberg. That's the whole key. And Flair, too. Flair knows how, you know, I mean, come on, name, brand names. You know, it takes a long time, like the XFL, to build brand names, they said. And I don't know how you guys missed that scoop that they pulled the plug on Vince, right? I said it yesterday. Well, as far Andrew, as... Lack, Andrew Lack, the new head of NBC, it was on CBS Market Watch. He dumped them. He came in two days later, you're done. He dumped the XFL. Well, NBC had to dump them. They had no choice. Of course. Of yeah, course. The, thing that killed the, league was, the thing that killed the league was, uh, was UPA the when they dumped them, too. Oh, the media. It's always someone else. Ted Turner's a billionaire. Hey, what was the wait, what's, the, what's the deal with the, with with, the, with the, how's, how's Jesse handling all this? Because I just the stuff that I heard Jesse, I heard Jesse was because Vince didn't blame the media, but Jesse sure did. Yeah, he he blamed the media, but it's yeah, what, you know, I mean, isn't that it? Didn't Jesse okay? I, I like Jesse. He was always nice to me, but you know, he turned the feds on me. You know, that's Tom Zink. He just quit and left. I mean, he knew him better than me. Sat next to him and talked, you know, all the time. But Jesse was. I'm sure he was just taking the line about the media. The media, what, what are they going to back some, you know, fringe thing when you trash the NFL? I mean, look at the storied history of it. You know, I mean, I'm sure he was going along with Vince's line. I'm sure he got paid good money, didn't he? Jesse, Jesse was the highest paid guy in that, in that company by far. Exactly, but what I'm wondering is, he got over a million dollars. He had a lawsuit cause, about a contract dispute because of, you know, all the tapes right. and stuff, right? And then right, got a little, just over a million, yeah. And then, yeah, with interest in that, and then all of a sudden, he's working for him again. So, I mean, you know, who's signing the checks? Why didn't he go out and get some other governor, right? <laughs> well, yeah. you don't know why. Well, first of all, the other, go any, the other governors would not have done it. <laughs> oh, so that's the whole point. I'm just ribbing, you know, but, I mean, we got to help this. I don't think, I think he needs our help. And the listeners, too, I mean, come up with some ideas, because I don't think he has a plan. Uh, <laughs> yes, no, yes, please. I mean, really, it's desperate. Okay, he almost killed the child. You know, the you know the payoffs. I, I bet we're getting worse, right? Didn't the guy say the payoffs? I think Merrick told me that the payoffs were going down, right? When he started the XFL. Uh, I think that I I think that's what I've heard, and I think that was sort of inevitable that that was going to happen. You know, what happened during the bodybuilding? Uh, exactly. That's what yeah. I heard too. That's the whole point. He's been a failure at everything except the business Daddy gave him. But the point is, he, does, he needs help to get the money back, to get the ball rolling. What's his plans? What, is he going to have some TV show? or is he, Does he have some yeah, kind of stuff? For got, a, got that TV show with John Cena. Oh, yeah, Man TV Hunt. show, right? Tough enough. Yeah, and he's uh, talking about movies, correct? Talking about movies, oh, yep. that, that It's pretty desperate stuff to me, right? You think yeah. it's the, movies, the, movie scared, the movie scares me to death. Exactly. Now, do you think that the big institutional investors are marks? I don't think so. Look at mm, this, they, are, they are, and two years ago when wrestling was through the roof, yeah. I think they would have really been behind it. But, you know, the problem is, is that wrestling is not perceived as being through the roof. And, um, you know, what, when's, generally, like, when's General Electric going to dump their shares, huh? They got uh, about gen two, General Electric, uh, they probably, they got, maybe. A couple, they got a couple million, two million. Yeah, $30 million worth of stock there, yeah. roughly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this one I got to read is from Jeff O'Farrell, who said in response to Max Payne's suggestion last night that pro wrestling should be incorporated in high schools. Here are the ten reasons why it will never happen. Number ten: When anyone gets in trouble and is sent to the principal's office, they now have an excuse. They can always say it's just a work. That sounds like something Pillman would do. <laughs> Everything he did, it's just a work. <laughs> Pillman, you had to bring him up. Okay, go on. Yeah, kids would sign. I love that guy. Kids would sign loser leave school matches and then actually follow the stipulation. Titan Shrons are too expensive for the athletic department budget. Oh. Administrators would get concerned when the average weight of the males goes up 30 pounds per person. Oh. Oh. The faculty would fear that the misspelled signs in the crowd would hurt the image of the credibility of the school. Oh. The phone calls about my kids not doing a job for your kid would get counterproductive. Oh. This is great. Yeah, he's a sick guy. you got to have this guy on or have some comedy stuff. 
Yeah, it's too hard on students to to worry about selling an entry all day long in lunch at class and walking the halls. Three students don't want to be referred to as either jobbers or ring rats. <laughs> Number two, since the teachers would naturally have to be the heels in all teacher versus student feuds, the teachers would have to fail everyone in class to keep kayfabe going. Oh my. And number one, can you imagine 30 kids in a classroom all speaking carny? That was brilliant. Uh, let's see. Um, this is uh, someone who says, Hunter should come back within the next couple of weeks in a wheelchair. Some of the mid-card wrestlers should inquire about the extent of his injury and wish him well. Austin should come out. Pretend to be his friends and suddenly, suddenly start beating the hell out of him. Stephanie should be there to witness it, but before she can react one way or another, Kurt Angle like grabs her and escorts her away. I like that. You like that? Sure. Nobody likes that. Okay. No. Because Austin already said he hated him, so. Uh... Who said he hated him? Yes. Austin. I said he hated who? Oh. He said he hated Honor. Oh. Uh, well. I think they ought to go with, didn't, didn't you, yeah, we used to say something one time, Dave, that uh, timing is everything. I think the timing is right now. They ought to start the battle plan. It's summer months coming. No one goes indoors to arenas. So you push into Chris's, right? And they're going with that. But Vince is eventually going to go back to the big guys on top. They'll have their little run here, right? That's to satisfy the net people that then, you know, Rock's making movies, right? Austin's got a bad neck. Undertaker, he's pretty banged up, right? Mm -hmm. Triple H is injured. So just go with the flow, but get all these guys from WCW. Who cares? He's a billionaire. What's six million? Flair. Yeah, the thing with the the thing is with the Flair. Well, he just wants to be around the business. What you know? You want to work for Dusty down at the Double Wide down there? You know. <laughs> well, what, what are they? still you know? have two hundred forty-four million dollars remaining if he just got Goldberg. Exactly, Brian. Yeah, that's spend the money. He's taking risk on the XFL. How about how about on wrestling? I want to see it. Two shows are better than one show. Okay? Yep. Get them battling against. Competition is good. Now, who do we have to criticize? One show. So they need our help. All right? Two shows. Let Heyman just go nuts. Shock TV. Have it just cutting edge. It's just, no, it's not the WWF. It's just like, he, you know, he has his wife representing WWF, right? Not Vince. We saw what Costas made him lose his cool. Little Bobby Costas, right? I mean, yeah. Have Heyman or whoever's been booking. I, I, I read it was Heyman. Now, is that correct? Heyman's got the most influence right now because he convinced everyone to do the thing on Monday, and Monday got such a great reaction that uh, you know he won. He won a lot of points right now, so yeah. he's well, he seems like, to have I'm, the most. I, yeah. I know that I know the last night's show was very Heyman oriented because you could see Spike Dudley, you know, in a prominent role. You got Tajiri on there. The tables, ladders, and chairs was clearly Heyman's idea, and you know yeah. they came through. They, the guys gave him a great match. That's right. So take that down in WCW, or just let Heyman go run wild down there, and then he can keep it. Vince can keep his little click of Patterson and all those other guys. They got it running. I'm sure those agents are going, hey, listen, we had this thing running before you. And you know, you know how they, you know, back, but it's the competition, the backstabbing's got to be worse than ever, right? Mm -hmm. I would guess. Uh, you know? it will, it, it will be now, especially with business going down, yes. Of course. That's, it brings, you know, that's, they're, they're all insecure guys. They're insecure about their job. What are they going to do? Start a, you know, what are they going to do? You know, they, they, start a union. Huh? <laughs> yeah, well, start, start, start a union. Oh, yeah, like wrestlers stick together, right? Yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, what's the other options? You know? You've seen a stock? Would you buy it? No, nah, I've already made stock recommendations, and they're always wrong, so I don't talk about the stock. <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, I, 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 would, I wouldn't buy that. You know, you look at the graph, it's a slippery slope. You know, it seems to be hanging around 13, 14. Yeah, well, the way that stock reacts, now that business is going down, that stock will probably skyrocket. I don't think so. What's their plan? It always does the opposite of what you would expect. The WWF stock? Yeah. WWF stock, yeah, when you... Ex when 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 news is good, we, we remember whenever there's like really big news, it always goes down, right? Yeah. We, we, so, and whenever there's like no news or bad, like like leading into the XFL, yeah. that thing was going way up, and mm -hmm. and and we all knew XFL was going to be a failure. It made no sense, right? So then the first week of the XFL was this giant success, and the stock went down. Uh -huh. And then after that, the stock continued to go down. So I guess <laughs> yeah, know, it's never made. The handwriting was on the wall there. Yeah. Al, 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 are you around? I'm right here. Al, do you know how to read these odds? Somebody sent me the um, odds for the pride. Uh, wait, um, what is what is like plus 150, minus 190 mean? I mean, I know how to read Vegas odds, but I don't think that's what these are. I think it's the same. Wait a minute. I'm looking for the email. Uh, it's the MVP you know. Sportsbook um, odds for the pride. Oh, somebody sent it to you? Oh, it's you. I, I got, I got, it's, it's, what, what, read it again for me. 
Okay, I'll just give you an example. It's so, Igor Vov Chanchin says minus 190 and Gilbert Ivel is plus 150. So obviously that means Igor Vov Chanchin is the favorite. Right. But what does that mean? So you have to, it's, uh, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, you have to bet 190 on Vov Chanchin to win back 150. Something like that. It's it, uh, the way they the, the way they work the odds is, is screwy. I can actually give me a few minutes. Okay, so so if you bet one fifty on Ivel and he wins, you win one ninety. I think so. Don't quote me on that though, because I'm not the greatest. Okay, so uh, I, I I am sure that, that if that's wrong, that we will get emails because there's <laughs> people who I'm sure there are some gamblers out here. So anyway, so let me look at this. Just see if, if my okay. So Igor Igor Vovchanchin is the favorite over Gilbert Ivel. Valentin Overeem is the favorite over Gary Goodrich. Um. Fujita is a giant favorite, it looks like, over Takayama. Uh, Guy Metzger and Chuck Liddell looks like it's about an even pick. Uh, Henderson's the favorite over Shoji. Joe Hill de Oliveira is the favorite over Nino Shembri. And Vitor Belfort's the favorite over Heath Herring. Pele over Dijiro Matsui. And Vanderlei Silva over Shingo Oyama. So anyway, that's the actual odds at the MVP Sportsbook. We're talking about that. Uh, let's see. Um, let me go through this one. Uh, before the Muhammad Ali Antonio Inoki match, were there any famous uh, pro wrestler versus pro boxer matches? There were like, there were like a lot of them um, going back through time. Uh, you know, I think Frank Gotch even fought like a, a boxer and got knocked out in like the early 1900s. So yeah, there've been there've been a lot of them, but Ali Inoki was the most high profile one. Let's go to Brandon. Brandon, your first up. Uh, hi Dave. Hi Brian. Hey. Um, yeah, I have an idea on what they should do with. Triple H in the next month or so. Um, I think they should probably try and get him over his face pretty hardcore. Um, they obviously started it with the whole Austin calling him out last night on SmackDown. And what they should probably do is um, cut some promos with maybe him and Stephanie on how, like, maybe he's feeling bad for himself and so on and so forth. And Stephanie's kind of getting sick of it. And then at King of no, because that makes him a that makes him a heel and a whiner. You don't want to do that. What? That makes him a heel and a whiner if he's complaining. He can't complain. Or, he can't not sell. Complaining per se, but maybe maybe. Uh, she can complain. Yeah, she should complain. Here's the way I see it: he can be as big a heel as you want until Austin just totally lays him out. And then if he's off TV after being laid out by Austin for six months and makes his big return, he'll be so over. Okay, but why? But why continue? Why continue to make him a heel now when there's no purpose to it? Well, you don't right. have to. I'm just saying it really doesn't matter as long no, as... No, you're right. It doesn't matter. But I'm saying, like, you know, why... why You know, he shouldn't he shouldn't whine or complain. That should be Kurt Angle and Stephanie's role. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then Stephanie complains. Um, Stephanie can complain. Know, Stephanie should be a total bitch, personally. Yeah. So yeah I think. Making Triple H feel bad. <laughs> Maybe making Triple H feel bad for himself a little. And then, uh... You know... So how, how could you, like, talk. Stephanie's like, how could you do this to me? I right. had, you know, we had all the belts, and you did this to me right when I was at my peak. You know, she's like, me, 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 me. That would right. be awesome, because then all the guys would go, oh, God, I've heard this from my girlfriend, you know, and it's like, and he's hurt, and he worked so hard, and, God, I feel sorry for him. That's good. She's got to do the guilt trips, too, where she asks him, like, to go get her, you know, coffee or something, and he can't even walk. <laughs> he can't go. He <laughs> starts getting mad at him, yeah. And, and like, the you Make yourself useful. Was... You're, you're lazy, right? Yeah, you don't, you're not doing yeah. anything. You didn't give me some coffee. <laughs> it's not like you got to rest up. You're not wrestling tonight or nothing. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> and then, That's the McMahon way. Yes. Yeah. Um, he needs to be in rehab on their anniversary. Oh. That's, important. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Uh, and then, like, maybe the combination of that with Austin trashing him in the ring, you know, saying, oh, it's all your fault. We lost the belts, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, at King of the Ring, when Austin apparently is going to be fighting Jericho. Um, I don't know if Triple H will agree to this, but maybe Triple H comes out and tries to help Jericho, or maybe to a person. No, nah, too soon to, to, too to, soon to show your hand. What? I, I, was, I think it's too soon to show your hand. Much he shouldn't be soon. helping Jericho. I don't like, because that's... Well, maybe I don't, not I, helping I, I, Jericho, I, but if he's trying to screw Austin more... I think Austin, Austin should do something to him unprovoked, rather than he, like, screw Austin first. That should be like down the line when he comes. That should be when he comes back. Because yeah. then Austin would have a justification for getting him. You don't want any justification for Austin beating him up and laying him out. You know, yeah. like that he did something to Austin first. Right. Well, I thought maybe. Well, I thought maybe that would give an excuse though for uh, the whole Angle and Stephanie thing. Because then maybe at the same time you could bring Angle out to. 
take him out. I mean, like, all the fans supposedly want to see Jericho win, I would think, over Austin. And so if you bring Angle out, and then maybe Stephanie comes Angle's, out. Angle, Angle and Stephanie screw Jericho. Her husband, but then actually That's slaps good. Triple H. Then, like, it seems like everybody's against Triple H. So when he yeah. does come back, I mean, he'll be, like, really yeah, sick. You, you, you yeah, you want everyone against him. In fact, should, should you kind of kick, kick him when he's down, kick the guy when he's down, and have her change her look? She, you know, she should dress better, but not that daddy. That's, don't do that. Not daddy. Have, change her look. She can look better than she does, right? Don't you think? Or am I wrong? I don't know. I would say I change your look. Don't go daddy. Not daddies. That sounds like people, daddy, little girl. <laughs> you know, not like that. Change your look, you know, and then he's, he's of no use to her. Yeah, yeah, you know, he's not, you know, how could you do this? That's the right angle, the psychology bit. Just yeah, I like, like I like the idea of everyone being against him because one of the things also is yeah. when, Austin, when Austin trashes him, one of the things that Ross and Heyman should get over is, he has no friends. None of the baby faces are going to save him, and none of the heels are going to save him either. So he just takes like this horrific beating, and then we don't see him for a long time. That, but keep him, keep him away though, too. But then he could keep him off WCW TV for a long time. Deal. Yeah, you got to keep him off TV. Go to the WCW deal and yes. and not let people know. Any, don't don't throw all these hints that he's coming back. I mean, there's like no. some big match that Austin's in, and he costs Austin that match out of nowhere with no he's going to be there ahead of time. And uh, I, I like, and then and then you can go. Well, actually, you know what? He should, no, he should come back and uh, screw, screw uh, not Austin, screw Angle. Maybe Angle's the one who should lay him out. You know what? Angle, Angle may need it. Angle may need it more. Maybe Angle and Austin together. And then, yeah, then because Angle, yeah, needs, yeah. Angle needs Angle needs that little killer instinct thing with him, and, and, and maybe Angle and Austin. Plus, you got a lot of Angle and Austin tag teams. Two on one and a crippled guy. Two yeah. on one and a crippled guy. Plus, plus yep. you want Austin involved in it, but Angle should be like Angle puts him in the ankle lock. Austin like maybe jumps him and beats him up and lays him down. He's gone. And then Angle comes in and puts him in the ankle lock when everyone thinks the beating's over. Yeah, and Stephanie can get with Kurt Angle. And Stephanie ends up with Kurt Angle, which is yep. the final insult, exactly. Yep, that would be good. And then change your man, look. We should... Change your look and then have her be a real bitch, you know? I know, man. We should be, we should be in those booking meetings. <laughs> no, 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 no. we got to help them. That's our duty. I know what I said before, you know, I didn't mean to criticize, but I like to watch wrestling. I mean, you know what's so funny is when they were doing good, I had no motivation like to do this, and like now that they're doing bad, I have all these ideas. We, we all, everyone's, got, everyone's got ideas. You should see the, the emails. Anyway, I was just thinking about something. I've got a couple of emails about the Fujita thing. Do you realize that there's a match? Tom, think about this. Yes. There's a match between two pro wrestlers on sun, Sunday in yep. Japan, and there's, they're taking odds on it. On who's going to win? On two pro wrestlers? Yeah, Kazuyuki Fujita and Yoshiro Takayama. It's the main event on the Pride Show. Oh. And when we, were, when we were reading the odds, I mean, when we were reading the odds, they have like, you know, Vegas, they're not Vegas. I think it's uh, wherever MVP Sportsbook is. I think it's, where is that, Al? MVP Sportsbook, you know? Um, but it's they, based in Cost, uh, Costa Rica. The Costa Rican people are taking odds on two pro wrestlers. Oh. The least they could do is have odds on whether it's a work or a shoot as opposed to who's going to win. At least then it would be. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, guys, I do have a, a, a breakdown of the odds things. Minus 190 means that you need to bet 190 to win $100. Um, and then you would go up to what put, a deal. Yeah, you go up and put it down one hundred and ninety dollars, and when that guy wins, so when uh, Igor wins, you can get another hundred. Right, you collect two ninety, and then on okay. The now, so, so now if you bet, so okay. now if you're betting on Gilbert Ibel and you bet a hundred, that means you collect one hundred and fifty extra, so you'll win two fifty back. Right? right. If the person is plus one fifty, you're betting a hundred to win one hundred and fifty back. That's what. That's it is. a good bet. Is uh, the Gilbert Ibel bet's not bad? On that. Who's your money like going this? on, Al? Okay, let's see. Uh... I don't know. I'm, I'm. I, I would, I would take Ivel. Yeah. In that, yeah. How about you, Dave? On those odds. I mean, that's close. It's close. Okay. Now, Fujita and Takayama. So that means that if you bet six hundred dollars on Fujita and he wins, you get seven hundred. I mean, why even bet? Because I mean, there's always that chance he could. It's the action. Much of a chance he could lose. It's the action. Yeah, I know. So now, guy Mets from Chuck Liddell are even money. Okay. Uh, so now I totally understand. So now, with Vitor Belfort and Heath Herring. Uh, if you bet 135 on Vitor and he wins, you, you get 100 profit. And then Heath Herring, if you bet 100, you get 105 profit. So that's a close one. So the big the big blowout is a Fujita Takayama and Henderson Shoji and Silva and Oyama. Actually, Sil and, and Pele and Matsui. Okay. All right. I got it. Got it.
Okay. This is from Hellion who goes, I thought that the funniest part of SmackDown was when Steve Regal said, we do not allow stereotypes in the WWF, so you have to stop the bowing. And then he said, no, go get me some tea and crumpets. <laughs> that was the second funniest thing on the show. The funniest was when Craig last week saved bell. by the bell. Oh, that was so good. Take surprise. Uh, yes. Uh, this is, I used he to also always had, watch... This is not the prom. That was not a good one. That, yeah, that <laughs> Yeah, there was... After all of that bad writing, there was some damn good writing last night. I, yes, this is from was. Lewis, who goes, I used to always watch Ron Smackdown, even when Steve Austin was, gr was gone. What makes me not watch or care is to see Steve Austin as a heel. He's not only a heel, but a wimpy heel. I'm sick and tired of seeing the same thing in the main event. There's been no new storylines for many months. Great. They had Benoit and Jericho win. Who cares? Their writers suck. They didn't last night. Oh. For a few weeks there. And that includes Paul Heyman. Hey, yeah, oh, yeah, no, 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 no. Heyman's a good guy. No, no, no. Heyman's I mean, a I don't good know. Guy. I'm not in the meetings either. I just, huh? I don't know. Okay, I think they either suffer from non-creative angles or misogynistic angles. Well, we're always going to have misogynistic angles in a male-oriented business. Yeah. I agree with Brian that Kurt Angle's cool, and he's the only one I look forward to watching. Uh, this is someone who goes, um, I'm very confused. Last year, Triple H got dropped 50 feet inside of a car, and he was, came back a week later. Now all he did was take one step, and he's out for six months. Man, that's interesting. Oh, wow. We got, we got a couple of emails, and i got to address this, which is so weird that um, this happens every single week, and we never get an email, and everyone seems to know. And now this week, we've got two emails asking the same thing. People reading that SmackDown got a 5.0, and I just said it to the 3.9. It got a 5.0 on the overnight. The overnight is the first rating that comes in in the morning. Yeah. But the final rating, which usually comes in at about 4 o'clock, which is the final, you know, that yeah. got a 3.9. Uh -huh. And everyone talks about the overnight, but the minute the final rating comes in, nobody cares about the overnight number. And the overnight number of 5.0 was up slightly from a 4.9 the week before. And even then, that was a disappointment because that's going against the, the big wedding on Friends that did a 22. Yeah. And uh, and they you know so they should they and 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 plus they still had uh, you know first run CSI the season finale of CSI which did a monster number as well so you know however you slice it you know I mean you can say it's too soon and, and you're probably right but the rating was not good news hell no it's not good news that's what I thought five .0. I thought oh good and then you corrected me I think that's what I got off the net too I guess it was the overnight. That's yeah, yeah, it's a 3.9. It's not good news. No, it's not good news. That's what he's got to act now. You know, look at the timing. And if he doesn't, if he's not smart enough to know that now, with, look at Hunter. You know, they throw you lemons, make lemonade. There's something good. You know, I mean, use this to his advantage. My God. He's not cheap. He, he has that realistic. now because, you know, just so, he should have acted earlier. Well, yeah, he should have acted when the we were doing Do you think we to the point where Vince finally goes, you know, when business is good, why don't I start acting now for the future instead of waiting when until business goes down is good is, When business is good, that's when you create new stars because you that, can. That when you know right. business is that. bad and you create new stars, they, they, you know, it's like all those guys in the Hogan era. Yep. People still remember a lot of them today, but all those guys in that Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels era, yep. you know, that were on top, you know, like the Mabels and stuff, nobody remembers them because, you, you know what I mean, they were, they were created during that bad period. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but I, you you would think that he'd learn by his mistakes, or it's like it's like oh, I read something the other day. Now, Brian, you wrestled how how many years you wrestled, Brian? Two, three. Okay, I've been out of it for how many? Five, six, ten, whatever. You, <laughs> yeah, you think you know you don't know you never laced up the boots and yeah that mentality the retards. I don't care what worker all you don't know pain. Oh, here we go. No, yeah, oh yeah, I've read it. Okay, yeah. Big, macho, tough guy. Suck it up. You know? No. You know, yeah, you can get injured in this and that, but, you know, you can't criticize. You guys love the business. You're doing the show how many days a week. You're obviously fans, and you love the business. Okay? That, they're alibi, and where guys are, well, they rank me 25th. They're marks, working marks. I met more working marks than I did real people. Don't you find that in the business, Brian? That uh, the wrestlers are bigger marks than the fans? Yeah, they just want to be on TV, and you can pay them nothing. I mean, you know, promoters, uh, they, you, I made you a star on my TV. Hey, believe me, there's a reason the independent guys work for free, and there's a reason they work for $25. Oh, I never work for free, I'll tell you that. And I don't think I ever work for 25 bucks. Brian does every week. Me. What? <laughs> you do? What? I mean, I what is plenty it? of free shows. What is it, just and the 25 bucks. Is it the exercise, or what? how much you weigh? Me, 170. Okay. So you're up in the uh, Pacific Northwest, right? 
Yeah. That's a great country. That was one of the best times I ever had up with the Donald ones. Jeez, I was complaining. Jeez, uh, that's another mill shut down. Uh, God, I don't know if we can pay you this week. Uh, I always complain <laughs> about uh, Don had a rep for being a good payoff guy, though. He was a good payoff guy, but he'd bring in news clippings. That's Steve Party, Moondog Moretti. I mean, he'd bring in, they'd go, that old turtle face bastard, that cheap son, because they'd been in and out so many times. But he was nice to me. He was very good with me. You know? Yeah, yeah, he, he built the thing Ed Moretti's still working there. up here. Huh? Ed Moretti's still working up here. I heard that he works at a hotel or the caretaker. Is he still working at the hotel in Canby? Nope. Yeah, that's it. That's I mean, right. he was working in Canby for a long time. That's Ed Moretti, that's... I used to, like, uh, I mean, I knew Ed Moretti when I was, like, a very, you know, like, really, really young. He told he, me he used to sneak up... into the matches at the cow palace and hide under the ring or just hide in the seats or something. Is that true? No, no, he was always in the front row, but he was at every show. I mean, this was a guy, oh. Ed Moretti, and um, he hanged with his group. Roland Alexander was with him. Those guys, they loved wrestling so much. Oh, I mean, and it was like, you know, Ed Moretti, I mean, you know, he, he, what, I mean, he just loves wrestling. I mean, more than, like, almost anyone. Still does. And, look, yeah. he, and he always will. Yeah. yeah. And you know what he told me? He used to be just frustrated and kind of a fat kid, and he used to gaff himself, cut him, cut his forehead. With oh, he had big marks when he was 14 years old, yeah. or 15 years old. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Maybe I'm exaggerating. It might have been 17, but I mean, when I, I remember seeing it already with the gig marks when I was a little kid. Yeah, he you know, he was a wrestler then. I, he was I, like, what? He would wrestle in his backyard, like. Uh oh, we're encouraging backyard wrestling. <laughs> no, let's not do no, that. Well, everyone does it. Oh God. I'm gonna wrestle anyway. myself in my small package myself and lose again. <laughs> <laughs> You'd get a win though. Yes, I would, and that's yeah. I've been lost, you know. Jeez, yeah, I had a bad okay. career, you know. I'm a quitter, you know. Yeah, okay. Moondog, he he really was. A, he loved it. A lot of guys love the business, but it doesn't love them back. It's like your job, you know. You love the business, but it don't, won't love you back. That's I don't think the business loves anyone back. Exactly. I really don't. So then, you know, you, know, you got to be realistic about it. And, you know, they put a spin on things and they just, you know, trash you. It's, it, it's too bad. It doesn't need to be that way. You know, I can turn the other cheek. I'm just trying to help because I don't think they have a clue. Linda said, well, two, three weeks, WCW. How many guys do you know, Dave? And you talked to a lot of guys. How many guys have been contacted when the start update? Wouldn't you know something by now? Well, as far as, like, the few guys, if they're going to bring them in Monday, they're because because the, they'll be told to keep it quiet. But it's only going to be two or three. Yeah. But um, I mean, basically, as far as like the people who are all interviewed in Atlanta and Florida and all that, I mean, I think most of them have not heard anything since their interview. And you know, everyone's, you know, they're I don't want to say scared, but they're kind of hoping to hear something. But you know, there's nothing to hear. What can you say? Like because they know, don't so have they'll... a plan. That's what I'm saying. Well, they, they have no plan. They, you know, they they actually had a plan. They just couldn't get the TV. So now they've got to restructure and make a plan that works. And I don't know that they have the plan that works yet. They well, say that they got a, they say that they got four different plans, and uh, they're going to go with one of them. So we'll find out. And then, you know, it'll be. I think it's going to be starting to be evident Monday, if not a couple of weeks from now. Hmm. I think Monday's going to be an interesting show. Really? Yeah, I do. Yeah, uh, but with, I don't know. WCW used to lose the war when they uh, when Nash beat Goldberg, right? Like, uh, a lot of people say that that was the beginning of the end, but you know what? They did right. so many things that were the beginning yeah, of the end. Beginning it's of hard the to end point and... to any one of them. It was, yeah. it was that was that was a bad move, and there were, but there were like 500 bad moves, you know. So yeah, but don't you don't you feed a fire like if you're gambling or whatever, you know, you just put you know you win, then you double your bet, and then you ha you know that's in, then you you uh, snuff a drive. I, you know? I I remember when that was going on. I thought that was the stupidest thing. I was going so, like, they can't do this, you know, they can't do this, and then they did it. Yeah, and you know, like, the first nitro. What was the main event? Was Hogan and Luger? The first, no, 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 that was like about three. Luger walked in, I think that might have been the second or third week. Hogan okay, and well, really, the first that was one was Hogan and Boss Man. They were already hot shotting. They were already giving huge matches away for free on TV. Yes. And, you know, if you really want to look at the beginning of the end, it was really the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> they, just lucked into, they just lucked into that one hot streak. You're right. Yeah, they had, a, they had a great hot streak, but they were already making those little mistakes that became huge mistakes that killed the company at the very beginning. And, and you know, the other thing, they, the two things that happened is, is they lucked into that NWO angle and they revolutionized the in-ring product by bringing in the small guys that Vince, and Vince was so far away from the small guys, he was, you know, he was trying to bring in, you know, um, was it like Rick Bogner as, uh, as Razor, and, you know, I mean, it was the Vince mentality, all the, the big, big guys, and then the other guys were working rings around him, you know, because they had all the small guys and it was something new, and that's when it took off. Okay. And the thing was, when you had the two TV products, we've said this so many times, when you watch TV, you really can't tell how much bigger guys are than guys on another TV show. All you saw was an awesome match on Nitro and a horrible match on Raw. Who cares if the two guys were eight feet tall? It doesn't matter. 
It was just yeah. what you saw on TV in the ring. Maybe the fans at ringside went, man, that uh, fake Diesel, that's a real big guy, but that didn't mean anything. Yeah, but you guys, don't you think that we're looking at it or we see things that the other people, that the fans, the casual fans, like my boss, he's a mark, and a lot of guys that work are marks, and that's who I... You know, I gauge that when I go on your shows, and if they're talking about it. this week, they talked about it. they haven't for a couple of years. Nothing interesting. You know what I'm saying? And they like yeah, to if, they liked, if they like if they like Monday and Thursday, then that's definitely a good sign. It is a good sign. That's what I'm saying. Okay, yeah, let's hope they've turned the corner. But let's okay, the past is behind. Let's have more of this. You know, I mean, what are these guys going to do? I mean, how many people can run camps? Well, they, their options suck. So if Vince owns them all. Bring them back. He's a billionaire. What does six million mean for a guy that everyone wants to see? Goldberg, Austin, and then you got uh, Triple H, Goldberg, Goldberg, and The Rock versus you know Triple H, Austin. Uh, you, Tag matches. Uh, yeah, Goldberg, and Rick, not, Goldberg and, you, and Ric Flair against somebody. Yeah, and then you build yeah, the this... you build the confidence of the company. You build the stock. You get it rocking and rolling. The only you know the only people that are pushing it are the people that you know own the stock, right? I mean. You know, the investors, you know? I don't think the investors have a clue what's going on. No, so no you really think about those in matches you just place. mentioned with Goldberg and Austin and Goldberg and Rock and the tag matches and Flair. Just think about that. And then think about the 24 guys they have now and some developmental guys and what a gigantic difference that really is. Yeah. yeah. I, I, you know what, though? I think deep down we all know that they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna have to bite the bullet and sign them, I think. Well, that's what I'm trying to get the point across. You should sign everyone. Where are these guys going to go? But, I mean, I'm not getting any younger. I don't know about everybody. <laughs> not, well, okay, yeah, you guys are closer to it. But what I'm saying is, you know, DDP, you can get him for a song because he's not getting any younger, and he wants to just rationalize it. Oh, it wasn't because uh, Eric Bischoff was my neighbor, and that's all it was. So he'll work well, for free. He'll work for free with Vern Gagne. He just wanted to be on TV. What's he going to do now? The thing with DDP, though, is, is that... Dots. I want him to see, like, Dusty, he'll, he'll dress him up like Dusty <laughs> no, or Dusty. No, no, they can't, they can't be humiliating people. It's not the time to humiliate anyone. Well, I think for the boys, they'd like it. Yeah. Bring in Goldberg, bring in Flair, bring in some of the top, Scotty Steiner. How many, they're not getting any younger. The point is, with all this stuff going on, uh, don't talk crap. Let's let's get going with the program here. They got to, you know, let's go. Bite the bullet. Well, like you guys. I, I, think, I think they will. I think they will. Let's go to Chit in uh, Oklahoma. What's going on? Hey, guys. I have hey. a couple questions for Tom. Yes. Uh, my first one is, Tom, if you're the head writer for the new WCW, what would you do with the DDP? What I, what I, what would I do with the DDP? I think we just heard. <laughs> yeah, maybe he was on time delay. Uh, okay. Any specifics? With DDP? Yeah. Uh, he just wants to justify himself. He just, you know, that, you know, he's somebody because, you know, I've trashed him just unmercifully. You know, he's the case. You know, you don't put a 40-year-old guy and then train him and take a manager in wrestling, and then all of a sudden he's a wrestler. You just don't do that, okay? And you, you think that was a wise investment for Ted Turner to push him there? Yeah, he got to be a good worker. He, you know, he might have a spot on the car, jerk the curtain open or whatever, but two knee braces and all that, you know, has to put all this spin on it. You know, Leatherface, right, like Mark Madden said, and they got him fired, you know? No, no. He'd have to, they're all going to learn a real cruel lesson, but I think reality set in with a lot of the guys. I, I wouldn't have any plans for DDP other than to dress him up in polka dots. I'd bring Dusty back. I'd bring Dustin back. I'd bring him all back. Uh, nah, come on. You can't dust Dustin. There's nothing there. I'm kidding. That's what I'm saying. I'm Luger. But, but they, no, yeah, I was just saying, no, yeah. There's what, no upside to Luger. The, the point is, you don't think they were corrupt to sign him for $750,000 of Trent Turner's money? Who, Dustin? Oh, what a great deal that was. I mean, yeah, corrupt. Corrupt. But you know what it was? But it, that was during that period where Eric Eric overspent for anyone in the WWF. I mean, he's a mental. Kurt, he's a mark. Kurt Hennig, Rick Rude, all those guys got great money deals that you know they never they never should have got. What Eric's a Brian mental. Adams? Brian Adams was the best of all. I just <laughs> Eric is just he, he was Vern's coffee boy. I never had any respect for him. It just you know yeah, what goes around comes around. Now well, he's probably broke. Okay, anything else, Chip? Uh, one more question. Yes. Uh, Thomas wanted to know what you thought of DDP saying him and Scotty Steiner are the best friends now after their fight. Yeah, sure. He had, that's why he came down with 14 security guards and Scotty Steiner. Listen, I'd rather jump out a 10-story window than fight him. I've seen him mad before. I would, too. <laughs> huh? Yeah, you know, I mean, he's an animal. And that's the whole thing. You know, get the Steiner boys. They're your policemen. You know, like I said, Scotty, Scotty Steiner, Rob Rick Steiner, you know, the Steiner boys, Scott Norton, Kevin Wackles nails the pass. The pass. Listen, here's the finish. You don't want to do a job. You talk to the four boys here. I'll, I'll guarantee you. Guys around though. Uh, what? <laughs> what you I don't know. 
They let him know. You guys, that you just there's really no upside to him. And I don't even Scott want to mention Norton this. Kevin I don't want the idea to get see. out that, uh, that what? What people but, are wanted, but I get a lot of emails about uh, chronic. God knows why. Okay, but you know, you know what? I, I do believe there's only one guy, okay, who, who I do believe, and, and that really Vince will never call back, and it's Kevin Wackles. I really yeah. believe. I, you know, I, I really he won't call him back. I agree. Uh, yeah, he told me that. He told me the situation, and uh, you know, I guess he grabbed him or something, Vince. You know, but he was mad about the payoff, right? Yeah, for some for that SummerSlam in '92. Yeah, yeah. Just you know, it's just a rumor that I heard. But Barry Darso said that Vince told him, and I quote. Vince said he was never been so scared in his life. He saw blue, purple, red, green, his bang. He was choking him, bashing his head off the ground. Now, Damn. he messes with a guy like that? I mean, my God. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's a funny story. Can you imagine that? Having a guy like him after? You know, he used to bounce down at Moby Dick's on Hennepin Avenue. Who, uh, Wackles? Yeah, he, was, he won a tough man contest in the Twin Cities. Yeah. yeah oh, everyone yeah. was afraid of him. Yeah. Don't mess with a guy like that. This is, is, is Antonio Inoki crazy. That means the lineage of the now legitimate World Heavyweight Championship will have both Scott Norton and Hulk Hogan as part of its history. It will. And probably, did Tony Holm ever hold that belt? I don't think he did. The IWGP? Did. Yeah, no, he challenged for it. He never won it, thank so. God. What was he, no. a goof? He sucker punched Norton one time in Japan, drinking. Yeah, he sucker. did. Yeah, yeah that's he right. He blasted him, he had a big ring on his head, and he sucker punched him. Yep. Yeah, cut him wide open. What's what's with he? Was he hanging around? Is he hanging around California still? Kind of a goof. Tony Holm. Last I heard, he was on um, boxing in uh, Europe. Oh really? Oh yeah. well, yeah. that's where he should be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Jeez. <laughs> okay. This is while picking Heath Herring over Vitor. Keep in mind, Pride has reinstituted the ten kilo rule difference. If a fighter wants to use it, and no doubt Vitor will use it. Okay, that means that if you, ten kilos, which is twenty two pounds, if you're fighting a guy and he's more than twenty two pounds heavier. Then you get a bonus point in the scoring. In case of a draw, you'll get the win. So that's true. Also, fighters will be fined 10% of their purse if they get a yellow card. Man, that's a wow. that's a heavy fine. It's that a controversial rule, but it promises to make the fights more exciting. Um, more exciting. Do you think it makes more exciting? exciting? It didn't make you follow. It'll make you follow the rules more. Because that that's, that one hurts. <laughs> that's exactly exciting. No, no I, don't, I don't know if it makes it less exciting. This is for Tom. I don't think it's um, very controversial. Why not? <laughs> this is breaking the rules anyway. Yeah, yeah, I like a little cheating. Yeah. So and another who, thing. Who goes, uh, what's your opinion on the Madden DDP situation? I think uh, DDP had more stroke with Bischoff because they've been buddies, uh, you know, all along. He's the one. Um, DDP bragged to me that he gave Jim Hurd tapes of uh, Bischoff, and that's, you know, so I, I figure it's a favor. He got him in, and then. Uh, Eric wrote a phony resume. The story goes, and he had uh, con going on with uh, what was his name? The the Wonder Year Boy, Jason Hervey. Yeah, Miss, you know, and he said that he wanted to be a game show. He was working at uh, what was his name? The guy that Dusty took him up to his cabin, baby, and said, "Listen, give me a pencil, I'll draw you a play, baby." He going to take him up to the cabin. He spent a weekend talking about the scheme of WCW, and he put him on TV. He swerved him good. What was that guy's name? Kip Fry. Kip Fry's, yeah. Yeah. I liked. I, I used to like Kip Fry, but Kip Fry was. was a, pardon? He he was a nice guy though. Yes, he a, a very nice guy, honest. But you know, he see those he guys have star, stars in their eyes when with these guys. He go. He sold to Dusty. I used to see you on TV, and Dusty knew. I knew I had. Oh, that, that was but, it. Yeah, I knew I had him, baby. When he sold like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's the con. Okay. Yeah. Now that's an interesting thing because I remember going through that that whole period because we went yeah. from Jim Hur who. who who really didn't know wrestling. Yeah, he didn't, uh, he didn't even know reality when you talked to him. Hey, I tell him, I had Wayne Coulter bail him out of jail. Well, the wrestling police arrested me. They said that was a phony. So, you, mean, that, you know, yeah, Wayne Coulter no, was a nice that, guy. That's yeah. the wrestling police. Those, those weren't those guys that the indie guys dressed up. <laughs> He's, no, those weren't indie guys that came in. I remember that night, Tom. <laughs> that wasn't some bra angle, I don't think. Oh, that God. was no raw angle when you, you, you get arrested like Nash used to get arrested every Monday. <laughs> but uh, no, um, so then we, 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 we then Kip Fry, who uh, nice guy, but um, didn't know wrestling and they took worked advantage. by a lot of the guys. They yeah, and then, right? then they went to the Cowboy, which was a total nightmare. Oh gosh, he had some, so, he he knew how to talk to the guys sternly. 
but these guys with some stroke like the Stinger or whatever, different guys, I mean, you know, you know, good politician, they played the game, they were not masters of it, but, you know, I mean, however they got locked into 750000 a year, and, you know, I mean, I guess, you know, he's a wash. We don't ever hear about, we never heard the crowd chanting, Sting, no, it was Goldberg, Flair, you know, I think he's done. Isn't it ironic, though? I saw him on Walker, Texas Ranger. And I heard that. Yeah. He, he was a mess. He was a meth dealer. You think any judge in the land is going to give you uh, any love for selling methamphetamine? Mm. Well, I mean, and he's a Christian, right? I mean, God, I dumped that agent. They want a rib on him. <laughs> he's, you know, he's, he's had a prayer meeting with Dibiase. It's an actor playing a role. Come on. I know, but what <laughs> I'm saying. Although, sick, you know what? Uh, okay, I know you're a role the... model. That, don't, be, don't play both sides. We can't do that here. Okay, but you know what's weird? Okay, it's like... I wouldn't take... You know, I mean, what? You just okay, no, no, no. I, I don't see anything wrong with, like, a guy who's a Christian playing a role on a television show. But you know what? Yeah. At the same time, then there should be nothing wrong with them playing a heel role on wrestling. Because it is the same thing, right? It's a, yeah, it's, yeah, it's even worse than methamphetamine. You know, I mean, what do you, what do you think they're yeah. doing? You know, you brought your... It's the same yeah, thing, you know, but if you're, if you're in wrestling and you've got these little children that you want to be a role model for, these little children aren't going to understand that... This wrestling character is fake, like the dude on Walker, Texas Ranger, that's selling meth. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the one the one thing you're right is is that like when when those guys go in public, like an actor, they don't pretend that they're a meth dealer, but when wrestlers go in public, they pretend that they're not Steve Borden, they're Sting, and when they that's sign that right. autograph, they sign Sting. When when uh, you know, like uh, Michael J. Fox, whatever his name, whatever his character name was, in all the different TV shows he was in, when he signed that autograph, it was Michael J. Fox, right? Well, you got his autograph. No, I'm just I'm just throwing a name of uh, you know some some guy. He does, he does any autographs. It's just like uh, you know Kurt Angle was doing that interview and he said, you know, when I'm out in public, people go, "Are you really an Olympic gold medalist?" And I say yes, and then they assume <laughs> that I'm really an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah. me, they go, "Who are you?" I said, "Nobody." And they go, "You're right." <laughs> same thing. I'm the same guy. Yeah, it was just fake. El Faco, you know. Yeah. You know. Let's go to Ed in Texas. Ed, what's going on? Dave, uh, what I want to talk about is a SmackDown. Um, I had called last week, and I thought it was a good show. And, God, i got to say, last night must have been the greatest SmackDown that they've had. Um, Great. That main event was so incredible. That main event was and so it, good. It yeah. had such a good flow to it. I've never seen a TLC match flow that good before. What a roll. And, um, and, you know, and the Spike Dudley angle was pretty good. I really enjoyed that. I'm kind of looking forward to see where that leads to. <laughs> it's different. And, and it's different. A lot of, I got a lot of compl I mean, compliments about that one. I think, you know... He's good, and Kurt's great, and uh, she's you know, campy. She, she is so campy. Last night. She is so campy. You're, I mean, it's like she's it's so like, campy that it almost makes it work better. You know? No, it is better. It is better because of it. I agree. Yeah. Okay. And what else? The other thing I want to talk about is Tom. I followed you uh, most of your career. I've seen you in the WWF. Um, I saw the Battle Royal in the AWA and. I pretty much followed all your career in WCW. You're not mad at me because I was a loser, right? <laughs> no, um, no. In fact, they used to piss me off that that they did treat you like that. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I was a big fan. You know, I, it, like 20 minutes into that cage match, I knew it was you under the mask. How'd you know? Meltzer didn't even know. I called him after the match. I was just hooting and hollering, and they thought it was a good match. Imagine that. <laughs> no, I mean, I knew right away. I mean, within a minute, I knew that it was you. I mean, how'd you know? Um, the size and I just. I don't know. I just always had a feeling. I mean, I, no one ever would a say who it was. Z on your trunks. <laughs> <laughs> I, had a, I had a sombrero and I had a mask. Mil mascaras. <laughs> yeah, he wore really a mask in the shower. Did I tell you that one? And he stayed oh, on I the about a, Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, Mil mascaras was, 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 a, was a trip. You know, he still doesn't sell and he's like 62 years old? Oh, I can believe that. Yeah. I can believe that. He is. Wow. He just kind of like he just kind of like lays in the corner, and the guys beat on him, and he just you know just doesn't react at all. Yeah. Well, he might have a heart attack if he takes a bump. Well, I appreciate all the kind words that you uh, watched my career, but it didn't end up you know just you know like uh, Will Chamberlain says, you take the bitter with the sweet. Okay, well you, you're kind of not gonna like this then, Tom. Okay, just rail on me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> on, I can See, take, I, I've on. heard your interviews, and and huh? I have to say that I, I like most of them. Yep. But the last couple, you've you've turned me off. You've turned me off slightly. Well, what can I do? You know, don't hurt my feeling. Well, I, I know you're not bitter, but sometimes you do come off as being hateful and vindictive. Oh, my God. You know something? It's entertainment, okay? Uh -huh. So don't turn against me for that. Oh, just, you know, I had my fingers crossed, okay? Like Vince McMahon, I learned it there. I had my fingers crossed. <laughs> oh, it's like a grade school trick, okay? This is entertainment. It's TV, you know? Like the car crash at the News at 10 or whatever down in Texas, you know? I mean, you know, entertainment. 
They shouldn't be putting that stuff on TV. Don't you know? Don't don't be angry I'm with like me. I'm totally confused now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I, say, I mean, like, I don't really have anything against you. It's just like I didn't. I kind of thought you were, you know, attacking people for no reason. Yeah, but it's but, entertainment. But I'm like trying to say, this is a show, and that's show. what people are listening to. They do want to hear you tell your story. So I mean, I guess I don't really have. Okay. Let me let me give you this. Okay. You haven't even heard about the good stuff that goes on out of the ring, the nightlife, and the fun I had. Uh-huh. Okay, I'm just trying to help the business. Not negative. What they did was wrong at WCW, and I think I've proved my point. Okay? Uh, I'm yeah, not they, they proved everyone's point. They're what? not in business. What? <laughs> they proved everyone's point. They're not in business. I mean, it's, you can't get more proof than $62 million in losses in one year. Oh, my. But what I'm saying is, Vince, he lost in the XFL. He should get competition. WCW and Heyman's the guy. Heyman and Shane. What do you think about that? I think they should run it totally separate from McMahon if possible. Yeah, but Paul Heyman, you don't think he's a renegade? You don't think he's got guys that he wants to pay money to? You don't think he's contrite and he wants to do the right thing now, get a second chance? Of course he does. Yeah, this I guy turned me out of a lot of girls in New York City. To WCW. <laughs> he's a great guy, okay? <laughs> now, now, we, now we know that. Now we know this, okay. Mm. <laughs> okay, guys, that's pretty much all I had today. Thanks for taking my call. Okay, thanks a bunch, Ed. All right, let's go to Tony in Long Island. Tony, you're next up. Hey, guys, how you doing? Good, yeah, great. How are you, Tony? Doing great. You know, i got to agree with that last caller, Tom. I remember that first time you came on the show, you were just hilarious. And I just, what's happened since? What do you mean, what's happened since? I mean, since? you've done a complete 180. I mean, you were just enlightening and funny, and, and now it's just, I don't know, the last couple of interviews, it's just you've done a 180, completely changed, not funny anymore. What's going on? What do you want to know about? I mean, you were hilarious that first show. Yeah, but you can't come up with that stuff all the time. I'm, I'm on a mission you got to get here. some more material, Tom. Huh? you got to get some new material. WCW died, and a lot of people yeah. lost a lot of material. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, just, I, I, know. I, you know. I lost it about six months before they died when I just realized that they were actually going to die rather than um, just exist forever. And, uh, and You know what I mean? That mm-hmm. was a, yeah, that was, that was a bad point. Well, the next time I'll try and be better prepared. I'm sorry I let you down, Tom. You know why? You, you just set the standard so high, babe. That's all. Hey, babe. All right, guys. Actually, actually, the best time you were on was was not the first time, but probably the second or the third. Yeah, I know. He had it wrong. I knew that. I knew that too. I just didn't know the how one, far. The I could one. Go. I'll tell you what it was. It was the one we did that. We we'd been doing the show for just about a year because it was the it was the voting, and when you got all those votes for the best show, because you were in there, you snuck in there like two weeks or a week before. And we were doing that thing for the year, and we go, every, and, and everyone voted for you for best guest for the whole year. So that would have been, that was the one. That oh, was like really? the one. That, that was the one where we couldn't stop laughing. Remember that show? Of course I do. But I mean, there's certain things, I don't know how, I got a lot of heat from it. Just go, why are you doing that? It's like, oh, gee, you know, I thought, but, you know, I don't know, you know, I don't know how far to go. And I don't talk to you, and you, just, you know, yeah, I got a lot of funny stuff, but, you know, it's, you know, it just depends what you want. I'm trying to get the point across, and like, you're, we got to do something about wrestling, okay? You guys are on all the time. All right, and it seems like people, and they're believing the Internet. The two Chris's, okay, they're giving them a chance, but they got to do something. You know, he'll go back. He's just going to teach them a lesson, then they'll go back. His timing is good for it. Then he'll go back to big guys. That's what i got to believe, okay? But look, well, Dynamite. Well, continue to go down, he will go back to big guys. Look, that's remember with pattern. Dynamite Kid, he said he was never big enough in the WWF, okay? How, I, as much as I love the Chris's, you know, how long is he going to go with that angle? Triple H is out, Austin. I mean, they well, he has to. He, he, I mean, he's got to make new stars now. He's got Triple oh. H out. He's only got one guy in Austin, so it's, he's, you know, he's he's got to create new stars the next couple, you know, weeks and months. Exactly. Of course, he's got to bite the bullet. He's got to do the right thing. It's like, gosh, how can you be so naive? I'm trying to help. You know, this is more of a. I got an angle. You know, it's a good. You know, they should bite the bullet. It's not interesting. Uh, the new Ross report is out. Uh, he said that uh, that. Uh, recovery time for Triple H is, is looked to be three to four months. Mm. Um, Not to so. the bone. No, no. Okay. Well, he said this is the quad tear was worse than indicated. It yep. was a complete tear of one of the four quadricep heads. It was reattached by Dr. Jim Andrews yesterday. Uh, so that's the deal there. And then I, you'll love this one, Brian. Because maybe some of Triple H's critics will cut him some slack after the performance he provided us on Raw under extremely extraordinary circumstances. Triple H will be back on TV in a few weeks, and what should be very interesting. I hope he is back in a few weeks, but I hope he's not back for good because that would be like we've ever uh, made fun of Hunter's work rate or his I know. matches or I, anything like that. You guys are tough. I never used to cut him some slack because he had a good match. I know. We every, after every pay per view, what do we say? What an awesome match, right? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, he goes. I expect our crowds in Calgary and Edmonton to be red hot. 
I'm looking forward to seeing the Hart family while we were in Calgary and hope we can do something special for Stu Hart, who has made so many significant contributions to our business. Too little, too late. Yeah, they're, 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 they're really doing something this weekend. They're really working um, with what I'm looking for. Yeah. They're working on healing all wounds very hard. Wow. Uh, and then he said that uh, Nathan Jones and John Heidenreich may soon be assigned to OVW. Uh, Nathan Jones was the guy who we saw when we were down there, and oh, that guy's got tons of potential. In fact, OVW's gonna have a bigger roster than the WWF. They're gonna have bigger guys in the, between Brock Lesnar. I mean, um, Heidenreich's like six eight, three twenty. Uh, Nathan Jones is like six ten. I don't know what three thirty five. I'm guessing legit. Three. He's he's a freak. He's a he is a monster. And remember yeah, when Jr. Ju- had him cut a promo right in front of him, like standing outside. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We're, 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 yeah. You know, we were sitting there, and Jr. Just, um, Jr. Actually, he went up to me and goes, "Want to see this guy cut a promo? If he can cut a promo." So he goes in there and goes, "Cut a promo like you're having a match with Austin." So he cuts a promo, and it's like, it's like he's, he's, he's you know, Nathan Jones has done acting before, so he kind of cuts it like an actor, but he was, he was actually quite good. You know, what I mean, he wasn't, he didn't stumble over his words or anything. He just was a little bit too actorish. You know, he yeah. reminds me of exactly. I guess because they're both from Australia and they sound exactly like his Elvis Sinisek. It's like I was thinking of this giant Elvis Sinistic walking in front of me. But, um, um, yeah, between that and Brock Lesnar and Leviathan, Leviathan, he could be a big monster with uh, Nathan Jones there. Yeah. Uh, he's still be much... scary. Well, he's still got those bolts on the side of his neck. <laughs> fangs. So. Yeah, and the fangs, right. Um, I think there's some mention about Tommy Dreamer, too, that they want Tommy Dreamer, and although I didn't see that in the report here. Um... See, did Ben Wyber marry Nancy Sullivan? I, yeah, they did, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wasn't well, that a great angle? He stole <laughs> Sullivan's old lady. See, and Sullivan booked ben it. Ben was Sullivan. <laughs> huh? Sullivan. That was Sullivan's the one yeah. that set it up. I know. Isn't that great? It's like, mm-hmm. God, how ironic is that? That's just fantastic. That was the most unbelievable thing. I, I, heard, I, I thought Joey was lying, and you know, I thought Joey was lying. I used, to think, gotta be I used to think everyone was lying, too, until you know they were living together, and I'm going like, oh, my God. He yeah. He was divorce. I thought God, I could have swore he was married. <laughs> Not in a bad uh, way or anything, but just how he hooked him up and they, you know, put an angle and he had to travel to the gym together. It's like, what? <laughs> you know, Everything. I mean, live the part. It's like, oh, my God. Uh, let's go to Tim in Toronto. Tim, what's going on? How you doing? Hey. Good. 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 I'm Brian. I just like to say I love you. Uh, <laughs> make me laugh to, uh, all the time. Oh, thanks. And um, that's for, you guys were talking about the best Raw matches uh, the other day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I uh, emailed Brian about the uh, Rock Austin. That was yeah, the day after Survivor Series '98 when uh, the big screw job and uh, Austin had been re-signed by Shane, and then Undertaker came in with a shovel. That was uh, that match. But some of the other uh, good Raw matches, I wanted to say, was uh, the Austin Benoit they did uh, when Austin first came back from the injury, and the uh, Rock. That was a really good match, yeah. Yeah, and the Rock, um, Rock Mankind, the ladder match, and the one where Foley won his first title. Um, the one that Shawnee I gave away. I don't even remember the ladder match. Remember the ladder match where uh, Big Show came in and choked slammed him off the ladder? It was like right after St. Valentine's Massacre. This is horrible that I can't even remember that. Yeah, it is. I don't either. It's horrible. Huh? Remember, it was, it was like the day after St. Valentine's Massacre because... Uh, you know something else from uh, speaking of St. Valentine's Day Massacre that I never even remembered until I looked back at it? Remember when we were talking about Hunter never doing jobs on pay-per-view and that sort of thing? Mm-hmm. He did a job on that pay-per-view to China. She pinned yeah, but that's di- that's di- that's different. That's for your girlfriend. Yeah, you always got to put over your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> no, you do. There's just no way around it. Yes, sir, but, uh, not, but not in the angle with Stephanie, right? She should be uh, a bitch. He's ne- he's, 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 he never gets the better of Stephanie either. Yeah. They're always on. They're always even. Mm. It's a WCW. You know, what is one thing that Vince McMahon has always done? Turns a negative into a positive. Look what happened with Bret Hart. That was. That was supposed to be the death of WWF. He turned it into the biggest angle of all time with him and Austin. Vince's, Vince's, Vince's turned negatives into positives and, and so positives into negatives. And the biggest he's, downfall he's of WCW his... right now is the time spot, right? So why not use it to their advantage? It's 11 to 1. Turn up the heat. Let hit, like Paul, they're, or, not, uh, they're, not gonna get, they're not going to get that time slot. I think, it's that, I think that's about to fall apart. But I mean, if, if, it's it's a, if it's a late night time slot, I have a, hard, I like a more hardcore product. We're not going to get that time slot. I don't think there's going to be an 11 to 1 time slot. At least not now. What time? I don't think that they can. I don't think they can get a time slot. I, it, it, the negotiations of are kind of. Uh, so wrestling's not hot, right? How, wrestling's you know, not hot, and nobody really wants to add a new show. How can that be on? I don't understand that on TNN though. 
Oh, you have to have the I don't Dukes understand. Because TNN have doesn't want to have Randall Olaf T- backstage. TNN doesn't want to be known. You have to have these goofball TV shows on TNN, and you can't put a wrestling show on there. When wrestling TNN doesn't want to be known as the network from averaging a point five. And TNN doesn't want to be known as the wrestling channel. No, you're right. It makes absolutely. But Brian, think about like Fox Sports Net. Okay, they have all these shows in prime time doing 0.3s. A bad wrestling show is going to triple that. But they yeah. won't put one on anyway. I, I, why? I don't. Well, you know, part of the problem is they can't. They can't they sell the ads. They don't be the wrestling channel. They but they can't sell the, the pop the, channel. <laughs> well, TNN's. A, I don't know. But it's, what can I say? I know what I can say. You I mean, up. they. You know, they haven't signed that deal. They've been working on that deal that was supposed to go up in June, and it's. It looks like it's not going to happen. Well, get Goldberg, and get Flair. You know, things will turn around. If they got Goldberg and Flair, they'd have a better shot at getting that deal. There you go. You know, that was. You, the, you know, that was the thing that TNN, TNN wanted. See, the, the, the big stalemate was TNN wanted all the stars of WCW on that show. They Thank didn't want, you. they didn't want WWF light, you know, and Vince, you know, didn't want to spend the money for that. So that's where the, the negotiations fell through. Well, look at that, that's, I mean, that's that's where the negotiations for that slot fell through. That's well, so you just say Vince me. lost TV because he wouldn't pay six million dollars to bring a guy in, and they've got a year worth of pay per views with Goldberg. Gold, the gate on Goldberg Austin alone. Yeah, make it worth the while. Well, we, all, we, 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 all, we all agree. Million. We all agree, and I hope that they do that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. A, you brought up you brought up uh, Dr. James Andrews and uh, Hunter Hearst only, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. You ever met him in person? You can meet him June twenty second at five p.m. to seven p.m. Mm-hmm. at Terry Taylor's Professional Wrestling Academy. He's got one of the rings free from Vince. And Big Show is going to be down there, too. Go to the webpage, TomZink.com. I've even got a special link to it. What did you think of Terry as a wrestler, Dave? What is James Andrews doing there? James Andrews? He's no, going to no, be no. there. Triple he's H. Sure Triple H. Sir. Bicep, Triple H. Terry Taylor oh, okay, blew my okay. bicep because they were calling okay. Rooster in Philly. Mm-hmm. I, I always liked Terry Taylor as a wrestler. He was one of those guys. He got a bad gimmick, and it killed his career. Exactly, but why would he do that to him? You know how talented this guy was? Okay, they say about I do, Boy, I know how talented Terry Taylor was. When he came to WWF, I think he's one of the ten most talented guys in the whole business. Listen, but I, nobody knew it. I was in the ring with Flair. I was in with the ring with Terry Taylor. Two matches I only had with Flair, okay? Guys who really kiss his ass, and I fought back, and he held me in the front face. Lock. Flair is the best because he could go out. You know how many kamikazes drinking and partying? He lives the part, okay? He still does. You need him. You need him just for morale for the boys. You know what I'm saying? Like Iron Sheik used to be. But Terry Taylor, you need a lot, of a lot more than you need Iron Sheik. <laughs> what? You need him a lot more than you need Iron Sheik. Yeah, just kidding. But you know, hey, baby, you got any gang? Come and see. Hi, Bubba. You know, the Z-Man, baby. Yeah, Z-Man, baby. They you don't know. know what they're talking about because you're still the funniest on the Dave Meltzer show. Well, this guy, this guy <laughs> yeah. came on and hurt my feelings. I got to work a real job and I didn't have time to prepare. But oh, I didn't know he's talking about. Hey, Tom, I got a T-shirt for you. Eh? You could sell on your site. What is it? Zinc nine one one. Try to call me bitter. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Paul, you're, you're, not, you're not bitter. You're just... Uh... I, I'm entertaining, but uh, listen, you write down everything you want to know. You send it to Melter. He can. He knows my email address, and I'll answer all the questions. You want to hear some funny stuff? I got it. I got some really good stuff about pilling all the guys, okay? I'm out of the business so I can speak my mind like I didn't anyway. That's probably what buried me. Who cares? <laughs> That's why you're out of the business. <laughs> That's right. Ah! I didn't sell. I played it in reserve. I learned it all from Vince McMahon, but now I want to help him because he mm. needs help. But anyway, Terry Taylor... He was one of the best hands I've ever been in the ring with, okay? So if you want to go to camp, do you get many uh, guys wanting to go to camp or learn how to be a professional wrestler? Brian? Do you mean people calling? Yeah, I mean, well, you get emails. Yeah, we get calls the, and letters and that sort of thing. What? Yeah. We get calls and letters and that sort of thing, people wanting to be a wrestler. Oh, really? Whose camp do you go to? I didn't go to a camp. Really? Backyard, Buddy Wayne. I kind of got in the back door. Oh, really? Yeah. Literally? Well, he's uh, from Barnett's grandson. That gives him some rights. My right. God, Brian. I just dropped a name, and I was in. Really? <laughs> no. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, anyway. with Buddy Wayne. I, oh, Buddy Wayne? Yeah. I had the best of both worlds. I learned by a con, Ed Sharkey, who came from the carnival, and then I had learned discipline from Vern Gagne and Brad Rangans. So I was prepared. Okay, let's go to Dan Chicago. Dan, what's going on? Hey, AZ, man, what's going on? Nothing's going on in my life. You're not going to rail on me, too, are you? No, I'm not. You're doing cool. You're doing cool. Okay. All right, uh, guys, I got a couple of statements to make. Yes. Um, I think it's kind of cool that uh, they're going to put WCW guys on Raw, considering in 96, Memorial Day weekend, Scott Hall appeared on Nitro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody think of that? Uh, oh, as far as it was Memorial Day weekend? No, I mean, yeah, now that you bring it up, yeah. I mean, I, but I never thought of that. 
That's an interesting story. That either, think... But you're, you're right. It, yeah, it's interesting. You know, I mean, because I actually write up on OneWrestling.com, I don't know if any of you guys did, saying about bringing actually Scott Hall back. What would you think of that to the WWE? Bring him all back. <laughs> They, hey, they want, they want to bring him, hey, I, put it this way. I'm not against bringing him back for one shot, but I am very much against the idea that if they think that that's any kind of a solution, because it's a 43 year old guy. Six years who, later on the day? Yeah. I mean, cause, cause, you remember, I mean, the one difference is, is that, like, you know, I, I watched the Scott Hall tapes in New Japan, so I know what he's got in the tank. What do you got? And he's got a great personality, but you're, you got, you know, they set a standard the last couple of nights as far as what a main event is, and Scott Hall can't do that. So, right. but, but I mean, as far as bringing him back for a short-term thing, of course, better or worse if, if than he, the Undertaker. A man, oh, not, not even in the league, like one third of the Undertaker. Oh no, pain. really? How can yeah, that be? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh jeez. He, he falls down doing moves. He doesn't got it. I mean, he's he's old. Oh I mean, no. He doesn't, he doesn't stink, like outright stink, but he's below, well below average. Mm-hmm. Well, so the best, so. so the best thing you can say is WWF. They got to broaden their base, right? Their plan was in five years to be fifty percent wrestling. Now it's ninety-five or one hundred percent wrestling for, since the failure of the XFL, right? Vince has to no, make it's up. not. Their plan, their plan is to start branching into TV and radio, and that's no. just like with the XFL. Right it always scares me when they went. Right now it's ninety-five, but after five years, I got this from CBS Market Watch. Oh, I know, I know, I know. They say that they're going to be in the movies, and half their TV is going to be non-wrestling. Well, you know, hey, we're going to see a lot in the next couple weeks. We're going to see Manhunt. We're going to see Tough Enough. And if those things fly in the ratings, then good. And if they don't fly in the ratings, then, you know, that's his new XFLs. They, they, tough they, enough no. will fly. Okay, well, tough enough flies, good. You went on record, tough, right? tough enough is still wrestling, though. Manhunt is not wrestling. What was that, Tom? You went on record as saying that you think it'll fly, huh? Yes, I am saying that. Okay. Because I have this incredible desire to see it for some reason, and all my friends are saying the same thing. I can't well, wait then, to tough then, Maybe it'll fly. Although, I, I well, we'll see. I mean, it's, it's tough enough fly. But tough enough is still a wrestling show, though. Okay, I mean, yeah. But this the odds the odds are a lot better when Vince stays within the wrestling realm exactly. than when he gets out of it. Yeah, he's he's not done well in, in legitimate businesses, okay? And the booking is stale, but this week it's a positive. That's all I'm saying. It's a positive. The this w- week's a big positive, for sure. Exactly. So they're turning and, the corner. And then hopefully they'll follow up. I mean, hey, the WCW invasion done right. You know, I mean, it's it's a it's a potential big one. All so, I'm saying, it's there. It's knocking at the door, and like everyone, and they're picking up on it. You turn lemons into lemonade. It's there. It's Wide open for the pick, and he can, you know, he's a billionaire. Like, Brian, what'd you say? He's got 240 million left of investment. If he bought Goldberg, would it be 244 million? 244. He's got 250 right now. Bring Goldberg in. Yeah. Everyone wants Everyone's to see Sting it. Too. Sting Everyone wanted to see it for the last three years. Yep. Sting is WCW. Oh, not no. Sting, though. No. Not Sting. Why not Sting? Sting's, Sting's, Sting's a waste of money. Moved back and forth. Sting's a waste of money, though. No one cares. Yeah, That's, it went down, right? He was on top yeah, when yeah. he went down, right? Yeah, the, the, uh, the, now, the only, I, I, I never hear no anyone going, oh, I want to see Sting against Steve Austin. The only one you hear is Goldberg. Older, what about Flair? You guys want a 55-year-old guy in there? No, in the yeah, ring. Flair can no. play a character role and Sting yeah. cannot. Yeah, Flair, the difference is, okay, Flair, Flair can do the promos for Bill Goldberg. It's an awesome marquee combination. That's right. I mean, if, Flair, if you say Flair managing Sting, I don't get the same vibe. Nope, nope, you're right. You're dead on. You just... He's got an aura about him. He dresses in a you know a thousand dollar suit. You know he looks good. He looks perfect all the time. He can talk better than anyone else. It was just something that's about the key him. right there. And you know what, guys? That's uh, the key. Is he can talk better than anyone else. That's right. The other cool thing is too. You mentioned about the suits, uh, Tom. Yep. What about you know they could do an angle where you say Flair was managing Goldberg. Flair turns on Goldberg to manage The Rock because with The Rock and how he dresses, he wants to go with somebody. Flashy and uh, Rock would have to go heel. I mean, if the time's right. right for Rock to go heel, but you know, I think the Austin heel turn and the Goldberg heel turn and the Sting heel turn should be a real lesson about not screwing up and making certain guys heels that the fans don't want to be heels. And Austin, Rock fits yeah, in that category as well. Right now. What? Austin is just a jerk right now. I hate him. Well, he's. It, I mean, it, you know, it doesn't matter if they boo him. First, you know, first of all, in every city, from what I'm gathering, you know, he comes out and they all cheer him, and then he turns them, which is always bad when they cheer him first. But number, but the, the numbers are the you know the numbers are the numbers. I you know. know. I mean, what? if the numbers were through the roof, I would tell you that Austin's working great, even if yeah. everybody cheered him. Yeah. You know, but, because the numbers are your answer. This, you know, everything else isn't, and the numbers are just very sad, and it's because. You know, nobody buys tickets to see the heel Steve Austin, and people bought tickets to see the babyface Steve Austin, and so it was a bad turn. He had his deal 
well, yeah. listen, they, they set him up to fail, okay? It was a bad deal. He's got a bad neck. Who's going to want to? I would want to work with they didn't, they, didn't to work they, with. they didn't set him up to fail. He just, um, they, they made a bad call. Yeah, they, okay. It they was made, a set up to fail, but it wasn't something that they did. Okay, but they, they didn't want to kill. They didn't want to kill him with rock on. They didn't want it. The last thing they want to do is kill Austin. I mean, like, you know, there will be a time. I couldn't believe they when will, they did that. Where they will kick Steve Austin out the door, like as we all know. Yeah, there will come that time. But this isn't not not the week after that. The Rock's going to be gone all summer. That wasn't the time. But how did they? Didn't you guys? You know, and they were. Oh, it's good. It's good. Okay, WCW's demise. It's like what you got to cheer that. I thought it was terrible. What? what these WCW's guys were like, oh, it was a great WrestleMania. No, no, no. It was WrestleMania? Good. I thought WrestleMania was awesome. They could have showcased the WCW if they had a plan. Certain guys are gold. But, you know, people, they, they, how did they fumble the ball? They weren't because, ready. They weren't ready. But what I'm they saying, only had it for a week, and there was no way, you know. Uh, they, just what, weren't, they just weren't ready. What I'm saying is, isn't there usually a downturn half of WrestleMania, and they build angles, and then the summer's kind of slow, and then like they build... It depends on, depends on the year. You, some, some years the summers are big. Last summer was huge. Yeah. But they could sure spark it with a Goldberg return, couldn't they? And Ric Flair. Yeah, uh, they could spark it huge with the Goldberg return. They, We're totally out of time. Okay, okay. guys, bye bye. Okay, thanks for everybody for calling. Thanks for everyone for emailing. We will be uh, back here Tuesday live. Don't forget Monday we'll have Bobby Heenan on. Tuesday we'll be live. And uh, good night, Tom. Good night. <laughs> good night, Brian. And uh, I hope everyone has a real good Memorial Day weekend, and we'll see you all on Tuesday.